What is going on, everybody? And welcome to the showcase stream for Smite 2's very first Alpha Weekend playtest coming at you all tomorrow. We are so excited to be here. It's been a long time coming. The team is super excited. And speaking of the team, I got the GOAT squad with me here today. <laughs> I got the Smite 2 design fam. Ajax is with me by my right, but if we zoom out wide, we got Clumsy, Aggro, Pon Pon all here with me to talk about Smite 2. How's everybody doing today? Stoked. I can't believe it's finally like Alpha Weekend 1 already. It's insane. It's yeah. been a long wait and like happened very fast all at once. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's finally <laughs> real. Like, it's crazy. It's We're in the real. Smite 2 category on Twitch, which is <laughs> really? crazy. Oh, oh, oh really? I know, okay. right? Oh, that's hype. I know. It's exciting. Right? Super hype. Patch notes are live on the site. That's another thing for the first time that we haven't done before. Smite2.com if you want to catch up on uh, the patch notes, pull them up, follow along with us here. Not going to go through everything on the show because patch notes are long. AJ, how long were those patch notes? It was 60 pages. That's insane. In my, uh, in my Google Docs. Yeah. It oh includes the gosh. full item uh, text and God, full God roster, all kits text. So there's a lot of information in there, but there's also a lot of uh, high level summary, short form stuff. So, you know, take your time, sort through it. I Looking know. forward to seeing the reactions, discussion of it. It's all written like by Yamir, right? Like, yeah, by Yamir. Yamir's voice. First person Yamir voice, yes. It's my too good. I know, right? <laughs> so, yeah, patch notes are live on the site. And before we hop into it, I just wanted to stress that we're super excited for Alpha Week and One starting tomorrow, but, but it's early. This is the first playable version of Smite 2 that's going to be available to a large public audience. There's going to be a lot of stuff that's work in progress, rough around the edges for Alpha, but we're at the point in stage of development where we're ready for you all to hop in, give us your feedback, and our primary goal is for you all to hop in, and we want to build this game together mm. with the right. community, take all of that community feedback coming in from the Alpha, get back to cooking, you know, <laughs> making sure yeah. that we're Get incorporating everything that you all feel like you like, what feels a little bit off, taking and incorporating all that feedback just to build the, the Smite 2 that you want to play because that's our ultimate goal. Nothing is set in stone at this point, right? So we're going to test, we're going to play, we're going to learn, we're going to keep implementing new things, changing things. It's going to be a hell of a ride. Yeah. <laughs> no yep. doubt. I know, right? Well, before we get into a lot of the cool stuff, I did want to take some time Smite 2 is an all-new game. Right. I wanted to definitely give you all the floor to talk about some of the goals for Smite 2. We've talked a lot about it before, but before players get a chance to hop into this first alpha, from a high level, I'll pass it to you, Ajax. What yeah. are some of the goals for Smite 2? So, really, Smite 2 is us building upon Smite 1. Yeah. Smite 1 has been successful for 10 years, and we want to be able to do that for another 10 years and more. So, in this way, we open up all these new possibilities to ourselves, to, um, freeing ourselves from some technological constraints we had on Smite 1. The large reset in changing the god roster and the item roster and item system gives us a lot of opportunity to try new things. So really, our goals are listed out on the patch notes. We want to stick to these. We want you to read through them with us. We want them all to be understand, understood and clear. So we want to keep the core gameplay of Smite 2 similar to Smite 1. It's been successful for us. It's familiar to you. It aligns with the goals of a sequel game. It's what our players love and we want to preserve that but we also want to find a lot of ways we can expand on that try new things for new variety new mechanics new designs yeah um the new game and the new technology create unique opportunities for rebalancing smite and for introducing new mechanics that smite one couldn't support so mm -hmm. today you might see some surprising changes oh. I'm excited for them um, to see some of this stuff. A lot of it is different because of these goals. We want to try to do a lot of heavy rebalancing and also just trying completely new things. So you're going to see a combination of that throughout today. And a lot of times when you see why why would they do this change? Why would they why would they do something like that? These are the goals that were that are supporting the reasoning for those changes. Trying new things, learning new things, trying to rebalance the game, trying to free ourselves from from constraints. Absolutely. And talking about those high level goals. I definitely want to talk about player creativity because it's opened up a lot and Clumsy, I'll pass to you. What are some of the things that we're incorporating there? Yeah, one of the main things for gameplay design is we want to expand upon player creativity. We wanted like player expression and skill expression to be something that we really push forwards into Smite 2. So whether that's build diversity, whether that's role flexibility, it's it's about increasing the skill floor without necessarily alienating, you know, or increasing the skill ceiling without necessarily alienating the skill floor, right? We want to make sure that everyone's having fun, but we want to use Smite 2 and, you know, the 10 years of the future kind of thing is something that we can really be like, okay, well, what can we get away with now in Smite 2? What can we really push the boundaries of? Mm -hmm. And yeah, and that's one of our main focuses. I'm stoked. And Agra, I'm going to pass it to you because Smite 2, 
It's a MOBA, right? Yeah. <laughs> Where's the competition at, baby? Tell me about Smite 2 and be, it being competitive. Th that's one of the things that I think all of us are really excited about, especially, you know, Clumsy and Pawn and I all come from that competitive mm -hmm. background and, you know, been in the pro scene in Smite previously. And we think the, the competitive ceiling for Smite 2 is going to be even higher than it was in Smite 1. And, I mean, Smite 1 competitive was obviously so incredible. Oh, yeah. Uh, we can't wait to see what the, the competitive teams, once we get started with that, are going to be able to do. And we are definitely keeping the competitive aspect of Smite 2 as a top priority, making sure that you know everything we design, we're talking about how does this impact high-level play, what are pro players going to be able to do with this, and really allowing them to be even more creative, as Clumsy was just alluding to, and uh, just really keeping that in mind with, with all of our goals. Awesome. Well, speaking of being creative, one of the biggest things in Smite 2 that's different from Smite 1 is the big stat change going yep. from physical power and magical power to strength and intelligence. Mm -hmm. And I believe Pawn is already queued up in game and we definitely want to talk a little bit more about that at a higher level because there's a lot going on to it. Oh yeah. So for strength and intelligence, the big thing here is that you might be familiar with it as physical uh, power and magical power, but we wanted to give it a different name to really showcase that this is a whole new system. So characters no longer deal with strictly magical damage or strictly physical damage. They can do a mixed variety of types and abilities if they use intellect, that doesn't necessarily mean they have to do magical damage. If they have strength, it doesn't necessarily mean they have to do physical damage. There's a lot of new diversity that can happen with these stats, and characters can choose to be mostly strength-focused, or like some characters that we have in the game right now, like Kernanos, you can actually go much more hybrid and stacking those two together, and actually changing some of the damage types based off what you're building. So this just really opens up a lot of tools for us to create really interesting kits and kit dynamics, and then also give opportunities for players to be like, ooh, I really want to play into this specific play style within the character kit, and you can build that stat to actually go for it. So again, kind of tying back to the theme of like that player creativity. Uh, there's just a lot of really cool opportunities here. Yeah, well, enough of us. Let's go in game and, and, and look at some of that uh, strength and intelligence stuff. I believe oh, you've boy. got Kernanos pulled up here. And yep. We're doing it. Yeah. Patch notes show Smite 2 in-game. Isn't that great? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll just do the party lights real quick. Oh, uh, yeah. There we yeah go. Classic. DJ <laughs> Pun, let's go. Obviously, there's a lot of exciting things here to look at, but we want to highlight first oh, and foremost is the, uh, the tooltip descriptions that are to describe where these strength and intelligence values are going to come through. So even just looking at Shifter of Seasons, you can see the healing scaling on the Spring Season is intelligence scaling. Mm -hmm. So you can actually get bigger heals per hit by building intelligence on Kernanos. But you can see, at, um, and actually you get a lot of utility effects from Kernanos here. You can see the intelligence scaling on the, you can actually increase the physical protection reduction debuff potency by building right. intelligence on Kernanos. Um, you can get that traditional strength damage on Summer, but actually Summer has a unique thing here where you can see it's actually strength or intelligence, whichever is higher. Right. Mm, that's cool. So you'll have to really take a look at these things. It's really the, this system gives every god so much more depth, so much more opportunity to play different roles, different styles, different builds. Um, essentially, almost anyone can be built as an ADC or, you know, potentially melee. Uh, I've heard the rumors of carry. Zeus ADC. What do you oh, have? Oh, yeah. strength Zeus, baby. <laughs> That's, you know I'm right there. Right. Some gods have really interactive uh, kits with this, some a little less so. Some have completely different role changes potentially because of this. Um, there's just so many exciting opportunities within this system. I was distracted by looking at those awesome looking tool tips. It looked like right? yeah, a lot lots of, work. of details. We'll, we have we'll, simplified we'll advanced. <laughs> I skipped ahead of it, but look at them. No, we're they're they're gorgeous. More, but most case, we just want to talk about this and like set the stage for a lot of the stuff yeah. we're going to look at today. Yeah. In that, these new systems like keep the moment to moment combat. Mm -hmm. What we want from Smite One, what people are used to, a lot of um, core MOBA features, mm -hmm. which we're going to get into right now, is we're going to go through the conquest section of the game. Yeah, uh, I was going to uh, say. First, speaking of uh, systems changes on top of that, I was going to say. Speaking of setting the stage, we're already here on this gorgeous conquest map. Let's just stay in game while we uh, pass to you, AJ. Kind of like, what are some some of the design goals for conquest as we uh, as we kick off and Pong can start walking around. So similar to our, you know, general goals, where we're gonna, you're gonna see this repeated a lot, where some of these uh, gen uh, specific features also mirror the goals of the entire game. But we want to continue to look for depth in the conquest map. We want to add more impactful choices, um, more op options and opportunity. Um, important to note that this is like the first playable version of mm -hmm. conquest. So yes, you there will be definite plans to adjust and expand on the mechanics in the map. There's going to be some uh, new ones already and um, also a lot of uh, different ones from Smite 1. So uh, early on, this is a this is a like, really spicy goal, honestly, but early on, we're really trying to keep the entire role system 
as creative and uh, creatively open and flexible as possible. Mm -hmm. So a lot of players in Smite One are very used to the design team being very prescriptive with you should build this god as full tank and go here and do exactly this in this order or you will not do as well. Mm -hmm. That is not the goal here. We wanted to design more of a canvas for the players to paint the meta on for us, <laughs> right? <I'm> an <laughs> so a, a, we a uh, tried to gumbo. If right. There you go. <laughs> I would say so. I would say so. And we, reference ten minutes in. Sorry, guys. Yeah, we need at least five more by the end of the show, Ragro. I got you. So we really there are no specific starter items that tell you you have to go here, you have to kill this, you have to do that. Um, we want people to lean into the strength and int, lead into the god changes and role changes and see what things go. We found that maybe more aggressive strength-based supports are really strong in our playtesting. Mm -hmm. Sort of double jungle strats are oh, potentially it. really strong in our playtesting. Um, doing more ranged uh, utility supports instead of true tanks can be really good. Double ADC can be good. Yep, I, I think one of the, um, the fun part is, like you were saying, we, we've opened things up for the players and we're seeing from the friends and family testing, from play right, tests, like yeah. they're already doing things that we didn't expect. Like we didn't oh, yeah. already, you know, some of these, like whether it's Athena Crit Jungle, like just we, I don't think we tried that as much internally. We saw friends and family right. doing this. Oh, like, oh yeah. damn, like yeah. it's we working, you know? <laughs> first, first magical yeah. Athena Jungle, because like that's when you'd expect to be pretty good. But we saw the the physical Athena yeah, Jungle. Like, oh, it was really good. It's like yep. the system's working. Like and this that's is awesome. what we want. And so, you know, this is something that, of course, is open to change. We're going to see how things work. If players, if the general feedback wants us to be more specific and more stringent on things, we can. But you have to start this way. It's right. much harder to go the other way. Exactly. If you're already saying, like, you have to buy this item, you have to start here, you have to do this, or the item doesn't even work, then you don't get to test the other things. Yep. Right. Right. So that concept I just illustrated is something we'll come back through a lot. So, um, yeah, Clumsy, why don't you tell us about this uh, first cool new feature we have on the Conquest map? Could you be talking about the new stealth fields that mm. we see all across the different places in the map? Yes. I was going to say just in the lanes, but they're not just in the lanes. They're in the jungle. They're in, you know, we we took a lot of opportunities to make sure that when adding this feature, we didn't overload the map with these with this new thing. And so what we're seeing here, we're seeing um, areas. Uh, where if you enter into it, you, you become stealth, right? It's, it's uh, what you'd expect, which you've seen um, in other games, which you've seen in our own game that we've played around yeah, with in Smite 1, um, in different game modes and with Marty Cross and stuff. So uh, it just, for us, it gives us more opportunities to kind of just play in with, you know, lane dynamics, with jungle dynamics. It's something, you know, where you can create opportunities um, and moments of, you know, interest during the matches itself. Uh, but like yeah, like I was saying, we played with a lot of different placements. We played with you know a lot more of these, a little less of these. And right now, we are just at an iteration where we feel like you're opting into this gameplay, but you're not really being stifled by it. They're just fun. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're just fun. Right. These, <laughs> are, really these are. specifically are just like you get all sorts of cool um, ambush moments. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. You get a lot more. You get a lot less just like um, strafing back and forth, staring at each other. Like yeah. you have to check things. You have to ch use abilities or face check things or use wards. Mm -hmm. Like it just adds a lot of a lot of fun to the map. Yeah, I love the level one uh, game of hide and seek. Oh yeah. In yep. lane, it's Whoever just gets like there first. Yeah. Take it first. <laughs> yep. I, I don't know. I, I don't want to check. <laughs> Who's here? Who's here? Yeah. Should I ward here or not? You know? Especially over here because you like you see these ones and there's a mirrored side and there's left. You know. Selfish on the left and the right. So you're just watching from like these right side ones, them attacking the left side ones. Like I'm not, I'm not even over there. I'm over here. There's a much more specific de description of all the rules around these in yep. the oh, patch yeah. notes. Yep. But yep. Um, in general, they work what you're familiar with from this type of mechanic that we've done in It's My One. Yep. Cool. Well, we continue our, our map tour, and the next point is talking about lane minions. But I know we have them turned off right now, uh, just due yes. to based off uh, on the map. But uh, Pond, do you want to just walk us through how kind of lane minions work? Yep, so the lane minions work as you generally expect them to. They spawn at the start of the game. They'll run down the middle lane. They're your main source of experience in farm. Um, but there are slight differences in how they're spaced and how their damage is dealt. Um, a little bit difference in how tanky they are. Just stuff that you'll feel out as you play in the alpha test. The major change is actually going to be the Minotaur minion that spawns now. This thing is like a true siege breaker into uh, pushing a lane. Yep. It's a lot stronger. It has... Probably, I would say, I don't know the exact health value, but it feels like quadruple five times the health of a regular minion. And it can absolutely crush towers. It has a long range attack that actually hurts it. So if you get this in your lane and you can kill the other one, you want to push yours into the tower and, and help push. And that just adds a little bit more dynamic into, oh, they abandoned lane to go rotate here. At this time, I can start pushing. You have an extra tool to help you push. So minions are going to be familiar to you, but there are some new aspects of this that are going to be different when you're playing in the alpha. We also have the minion execute feature. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Minions, um, standard minions, not the Minotaur's 
get low health, they will get a flashing red element mm -hmm. on them. Mm -hmm. That means that the next damage dealt to them will immediately kill them. Yeah. So you get a little bit more last hit focus and highlighting through that. Um, feels really good to just like track through a whole wave, just executing minion after minion, getting. Yeah, a it's one of those things like last hitting and smite one has always been there. It's always you know it is important to make sure that mm -hmm. you're aware of the fact that last hitting does give you bonus gold. But now we've just given you like an added methodology of seeing what that looks like. Now now you're right. gonna know and it's a part of the gameplay yeah. experience rather than being something that's a little bit hidden. Very yeah. true. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right, Pawn, as you were walking around, I noticed these these little yellow circles on the sides of the lanes. Aggro, aggro, what are these things? Yeah, these are the uh, the gold caches, I believe we're going with. And these are really- Gold blessings. Gold right. blessings, yeah, excuse me, gold blessings. And they are a blessing because this All gives- names, subject to change. Gold, yeah, of course, <laughs> to your whole team. So right now, Pawn, if he Ooh. had five teammates or four teammates, he would have given 30 gold to himself and all of his teammates. And these are present in all three lanes. And it really just adds another layer of I really want to be contesting the lane and not just sitting underneath my tower and soaking farm as it gets underneath and I, I'm not really in any danger. These gold leads get going pretty quickly with these gold blessings. And they're, you know, we have some gold blessing demons, uh, Caps Lock in particular. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> good luck he ever getting, for, he will die for it. To the death. Yeah. I respect one. that. We've had team fights where everyone dies because of this 30 gold. Oh, right and, now, right? and my favorite one is if you go to the, in the mid lane, right? Like we we're talking about the stealth areas. This is the perf most perfectly placed one because there's oh, yeah. one right here. And you just know that someone's either hiding here or just waiting. I've seen people just like looking for the best opportunities to just gank at this gold. Now, how blessing. exactly did you capture those there, Pon Pon? Mm. Ooh. Let's dig a little bit deeper into this concept because this is a very new mechanic and it's going to have a big impact on the map oh, as yeah. a whole. You're going to see us referencing it multiple times here in the future. It's called Interact. Yep. yep. So we now have the concept in Smite 2 where things on the map have a uh, special area that allows you to interact with them. There we go. So you can see you can capture this Warhorn. This is the... We'll get to this mechanic in a second. We're jumping around a little bit. But the gold blessings were the first interactable we wanted to show so in order to do this you use your spacebar button or whatever your jump button is yeah. currently bound to will transform into an interact you'll do a, a little channel and then you'll capture it these were so we could try some different methods of you know gaining an advantage on the map that weren't just killing something or mm -hmm. just standing on something or just standing on something right so you right. walk in you have to manually engage with it and then you can cancel it, you can interrupt it, but you can also be interrupted. Right. It creates a much faster combat loop than just having to kill a whole minion wave, or that also, it, it has a different risk reward dynamic than having to stand and kill a whole jungle camp where the opponent can just stand there and watch you, you're taking damage, you're taking all the risk, and then they can try to just pick it off. Right. right. In this case, they have to actually poke you off and then take that ground, and then you can you have the chance to counterattack. There's a, it gives a really different combat dynamic, and you're gonna see us exercising this in a bunch of places across the map. Um, before we get too many into those, we should jump back to towers, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's Pon Pon, will you, you want to go show us and talk about uh, tower bounties? Yeah, of course. So you can see here in mid lane, and let me turn off tower killer so I don't just absolutely destroy it. <laughs> uh, it has these extra three uh, pips. Yeah. And so these are actually health thre thresholds that when you get to, they'll drop these gold bounties. So let's see if I can do this without dying. Uh, we'll, we'll god. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't like your odds. Yeah, no. <laughs> Your uh, build is not going to do much. To <laughs> no, we have no items right now. Uh, so. All right, chat. No, no backdoor protection. How long is it going to take? We can, no, we got it. We'll get there. We'll, we'll get only there. be demonstrating the first tower. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so this will be the first tower bounty. And you can see when I get to this health threshold, what it does is you have these orbs fly out. You can pick them up, and you can even see we have these helpful tooltips that explain what yeah. it is. But when you pick them up, they just give you a huge burst of gold. So this is extra incentive for you to actually break through and push towers early into the game. Using that advantage, it's a different way of getting a lead when you have advantage to push outside of just rotating. Again, just giving you more flexibility in what you want to be choosing to focus on on the map. And there's a special condition with that third one. Yeah, that one's Which exciting. is worth a lot more gold, and that one is only benefited to the team that gets to it first in the lane. Yep. Mm, so okay. you, if you break your uh, diamond bounty, then your opponent's tier one diamond bounty is turned off. In that yep. lane. Yep. So yeah. winning in that lane matters. matters. Only in that lane. Yeah, gotta win that lane. Got and it. also, those gold pickups are, are localized for the area, so it's not team-wide gold, but if you have an ally nearby, it'll share for whoever's nearby. Huge win for W keyers everywhere. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, it, and it matters a lot. Like, getting an early tower in Smite 2, you notice the gold infusion for you personally if you got those tower bounties, which is yeah. not really good. It's a big spike. Okay, where were we before? Jumping back to... We're talking about interact. We talked about gold caches. Jungle I think it's time to talk about the jungle. Oh, yeah. this is exciting. Okay, you want me to take this one? 
Yeah, go ahead. This is a big new system that affects the whole map in a deep way. Yes, absolutely. So this is what we're calling the infamy system. Every jungle camp on the map has a level. The level is gained by right, leveled up by gaining infamy. You gain infamy by killing that camp. You get it? You kill the monsters. They don't like you so much, so they power up their defenses to try to you know fight you harder the next time. As you level up the monsters, they'll be harder to kill. They'll be worth more, and they'll start giving better rewards. So, at infamy level one, jungle buffs do not drop. So there are no level one jungle buffs in Smite 2 at this time. But as you level up to level two, three, four, you start getting a jungle buff at level two, and then you start getting more powerful versions of each buff as you go. Um, each infamy is tracked individually, so you have to kill a bunch of harpies to get more harpy infamy. Yep. And this uh, is really interesting because this lets you prioritize specific things on the map, like if you want to invade. Mm -hmm. Invading your opponent's team red actually slows down their infamy gain on their red buff and speeds up yours. Yep. Right. Mm. Getting you to get a stronger red buff earlier in the game. There's also a couple spawn points in the game, uh, the ones along the middle line. Those can be different jungle buffs at different times and different, um, so they're randomized which color jungle buff they'll be. So depending on what spawns there, you might want to prioritize one that you care about the most of getting to the next level of infamy. Um, so there's no invader's curse on this map as well. So there's really just a lot of ways you can play this, a lot of different strategies you can formulate both pre-existing and on the fly yep. to power up your jungle as you go. Um, yeah, anything I missed, team? No, I mean, I think that a, a big thing, you know, just thinking about the competitive aspects like I was talking about earlier, I think that this opens up jungle pathing and unique ways to play the jungle based on how your jungler likes to play, based on how your team likes to play. People will find specific likes to play. routes. Yep. Well, like, there's been less of that so far, right? Yeah. Yes, definitely. You like, I, I'm really trying to ward early so that I can see if Pawn is starting on the yeah. left side. I'm doing way more vertical jungling than I ever did in mm -hmm. Smite 1, just really trying to. And then if, if I get a good clean invade off on the enemy red, I'm going to prioritize red the rest of the game because now I'm ahead in infamy right. there. Mm, yeah. And I might let my yellow kind of pressure go the, by the wayside. Yeah, but I really want to build that and get because the level three versions of these buffs oh, yeah. are really, really strong. Oh, the last thing we forgot is jungle buffs now need to be picked up with interact. Yeah. Yep. Yes. So this is a feature that, you know, takes a little bit of getting used to because you're just used to running over them, but it helps a lot for. Um, crowded combat scenarios where people don't accidentally pick up buffs. Accidentally. It lets you manually, <laughs> lets you manually choose or overwrite the buff you currently have if, yep. you, um, if you still have duration on your previous buff. We've also just made the jungle buff pickups generally a lot more forgiving. They last a lot longer, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so you don't run out of time picking them up. You can do a lot of stuff with these new jungle buffs, so definitely check those out. Yep. Yeah. One last clarification on these ones as well, because I've seen some people confused in playtests. The infamy system is not necessarily linked to the strength and, uh, and rewards based on, on that camp. So for example, you, the jungle uh, camps are still going to gain XP, gold, and damage over time. Mm. And infamy levels are just based on that reputation system and what rewards they'll give you via the buffs. The buffs. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah, the, the, way I, uh, the way I introduced that could have been interpreted either way. Right. The sure. main benefits of leveling up infamy is the buff and introduction, introduction of the buff and buff powers. Yeah. Yes. And the harpies also, they don't drop a buff, but they drop a shield. It mm -hmm. gives you a health shield with Trinkets. unlimited duration. Yeah. Very strong. Yep, and then all that info on all the buffs and the Harpy Trinket Shield is in patch notes. So if you want all the details on each level of the buff per infamy system, it's uh, it's right there on patch notes for you to read. You'll get used to picking up those buffs real quick. I have jumped over every single Smite 1 buff I've picked up. <laughs> the last oh, sure, I didn't think about <laughs> that. That's so funny. Every single one. Yep. Oh, man. Well, uh, let's talk about the uh, the Warhorn up next. It's the the solo lane objective. But Pond, do you want to give us a sneak peek? Uh, oh yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, you yeah, we sneak at something else. Oh, yeah, we we'll just use the teleporters. To yeah, here we, we go. Just, yeah, I don't need to cheat. I have exactly. cheats built into the map. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> if everyone can cheat, it's fair. Yeah, so the Warhorns, um, these are kind of like the, the totem replacement. It's only going to be featured in the solo lane, and it's something that we were looking at earlier where you're going to use that interact mechanism, and it's kind of like a you know a capture the flag scenario where you want to get your uh, progress on the Warhorn all the way to full before the enemy kind of takes over and does it to theirs instead. So only one team can capture the Warhorn um, at a time before each, it re, uh, each respawn to the Warhorn, war um, and it'll be empowering the next wave of all the minions on your team. So they're going to be getting stronger. And it also does an immediate benefit of uh, gold for your entire team, too. Yep. 
So, and it is noticeable if your uh, if your solo laner has given up a lot of warhorns and you're fighting a lot of warhorn fused waves. Oh yeah, it gets. You're it gets like, tough. hey, uh, oh yeah, can <laughs> we uh, can we maybe get a warhorn or two over here? <laughs> I know, like, right? That might help. They take <laughs> a lot more time to clear, and you take a lot more chip damage away when trying to clear them. Or if you and if you're not around with them, you could lose. You know, you could mm -hmm. lose waves. Yeah, There's also another objective that like. It might actually like sometimes not be worth the fact that we've been fighting over it for three minutes and have brought multiple oh, yeah. people over <laughs> just to contest this warhorn. But man, you really want to be the one that captures it. Oh just, yeah. If it, it's a it's a moral victory. I've had some funny times of just like you know me and someone else with soul laner just staring off at each other. And one person's trying to get it, and then the other person just like uses like a Bologna ulti to stun them. And in that time, they don't even attack; they just go for the war and capture. Oh, and getting yeah. that yeah. quick yeah. interact, like stepping into the right space, hitting the key, getting it going, and like stepping back out. A lot of times, people will think, "Oh, I'll definitely be able to interrupt them," but then they get it because you weren't quick enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, there's a lot of combat dynamics and there. Playing around the strategy of the Warhorn early to mid game is obviously important. You want to help with your, your team across the board. Also mid to late game where you, your minions being empowered in one lane versus the other. So like, for example, you get the Warhorn and then you push um, on one side of the map, right? And you know the I, other sides I'm of the so map are always going to be able to. We get a lot of Fire Giant cues where like instead of, we're, we're like not quite ready for Fire Giant and the fight kind of spreads out and you fight over the Warhorn instead because it's really impactful late game. You yes. want that minion push. You yep. want that free push, especially while you're fighting over objectives. Mm. It's all it scales so well throughout the game. And yep. I always like am happy to go pick it up. Yeah. Yep. That's awesome. And yeah, one thing that I noticed that I wanted sick, to so. call out is <laughs> uh, the way you capture it is you interact with it, but you don't have to stand on the point right. whenever it's going. So you can interact with it. Right. Start the capture, walk away, clear wave, rotate but a little if your bit. enemy comes in and interacts with it, and they will stop your progress and start yeah. back theirs. Yeah, and it does remember progress, too. So if you had it almost finished and someone comes and snipes it, right. uh, and you take it back quickly, it's not like you've lost all that progress. So you're constantly making progress towards right. finishing it. purely additive. Cool. Well, we're on the uh, solo lane side of the map. Our next point is the teleporters. Uh, and we're going to talk about the Gold Fury here, too. So let's talk about the teleporters that get on the right side of the map before we talk about Gold Fury. Yeah, teleporters or pawn. Did you want to yeah. take porters? Yeah, so for the teleporters, so uh, as a jungler main, the mm -hmm. fact that you don't know exactly where I'm starting and the fact that I can gank and teleport to go farm the other side of the map or surprise gank the other side of the map as well, just the amount of options and flexibility as a jungler alone has been super huge for these teleporters. But if you lose sight of your lane opponents, if they push and they leave, you don't know if they went necessarily to go potentially invade, you don't know if they went to Gold Fury, you don't know if they're about to go gank solo lane. And this positioning makes it so that it's accessible just enough that it uh, is good to do and you can make some really hype plays off of it, but it's not so accessible that it's a constant feature where you really have no idea where right. anyone is. You can make really good educated guesses and that's something that's really cool about this. It, you know, obviously we've got teleporters of some mechanic now in Smite 1 and, so, and a lot of people who have talked about like, oh, why, why aren't they exactly the same in Smite 1, Smite 2? It's because these uh, these types of teleporters, the gameplay that we wanted is, is very different, right? We didn't want to just, we're not looking to copy and paste, even though there's yeah. like the Smite 1 serve a different uh, function, it's their fun for their map. But for this map, we, we wanted to make sure you can make those sly and coy plays. You don't have to reveal people. You know, more mystery. Do, a little bit more mystery, a little bit more intrigue. And you can see we also have a cooldown here, so you can't just teleport back and forth. Yeah. Um, so there is a little bit of a timer. It's not, you can eventually like come in over here, fight, fight, and then afterwards the timer will probably have fallen off and you can go back. But you can't just use this to constantly ping pong back and forth right. to confuse your opponent and make it really hard for you to get killed. And for all of these interactables on the map so far, you get interrupted via damage. So mm -hmm. it's not like CC, like teleport and smite one or anything like that. If you get hit while you're doing your channel of the interact, you will immediately stop. Right. That's a good point. I cannot wait to do to take my duo lane and gank Nika at level two and <laughs> like level two. It's gonna be awesome for oh, me, man. not for him. Enjoy that upper hand you have on the pros for I know, right? one yeah. very short amount of time. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, uh, sweet. Well, Pana's already walking over there. Let's talk about the Gold Fury. Oh, yeah. yeah. So Gold Fury is a bigger deal than it has ever been in Smite 1. Now you see the underneath the kills on the top of your HUD there, you've got three empty dots. Those are your Ooh. Gold Fury count. So if you get a Gold Fury, you'll get one of those. And each time you'll get golden experience as you're used to, but then also you'll get a unique buff that is permanent uh, based on how many Gold Furies you've gotten. And you keep all of them as you go. So the first time you kill a Gold Fury, you're, you and your whole team will permanently have a speed boost out of Fountain that is doubled for the rest of the game because you've gotten a gold fury if you've killed if you kill a second gold fury as a team you also will have nearby friendly minions take reduced damage and deal more damage and if you get that third one then you deal bonus true damage to structures and so this is a way of us kind of advancing the game throughout the throughout the uh throughout the match 
in a natural kind of scaling way where you don't have to necessarily fight around Fire Giant. Getting that third Gold Fury, now that structure bonus that kind of used to be on Fire Giant is now on getting your third gold. So you want to group up, play around that. We have really changed our late game macro calls a lot from Smite 1, really needing to, oh, hey, this is going to be their third gold. I don't know if we really want to give that up or what's right after the third gold. What's yeah, I was just, I was, I was yeah, yeah, was just like, like fourth fury. The, the fourth, fourth fury, which I'll get to in a moment. But a lot of really cool calls of, oh, they only have one gold. It's okay if they get their second. Let's group around fire. Right. Or, hey, we're, we got some early gold furies because we got an early lead. The enemy team's starting to scale. They might outscale us. They might out-team fight us. They want to go for fire giant. But we feel good because we got two gold furies already Spooky and can play fury. to our third. Yeah, uh, we gotta, yeah here ooh. it is. So the ancient fury. So once a team has killed three gold furies, uh, once the, one team has that final buff, then the ancient fury spawns. And it is much, much spookier than your typical oh, yeah. Gold Fury. They wanted something spooky and we gave it to them. There's no doubt about that. When you kill the Ancient Fury, this will disable enemy towers for 100, and Phoenixes, for 180 seconds. So this is the strongest way to end the game. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this <laughs> is a true alpha. alpha. Yeah, it's <laughs> true <laughs> alpha moment. You said the thing. Right here. Uh, this is also not exactly the same build version that's yeah. going to be in the test yeah. this weekend. Sure. So like, also think you might see some minor uh, differences. I also think right. we updated it to uh, 120 seconds based on feedback as well. So mm. that tooltip might be incorrect. Yeah so, yeah, so you might see very subtle differences while you'll be playing this weekend. Just keep that in mind. Yeah. Yes. But this Ancient Fury is now the premier game ender if you want to try and get together and siege as a team. But it doesn't give you combat strength like something like a Fire Giant buff does. So it really adds a whole other level of, of macro decision making on the map, which is something that I think Smite players have been asking for for a really long time. And it's been playing out really, really well, in my opinion. I think the stacking Gold Furies versus going for Fire Giant is, uh, has been a really yeah, awesome decision. It's a tough call. And like you said as well, one team could out end up getting the three Gold Fury kills, but then the, the other team who might be behind, you know, they might decide to not fight over Fire Giant, but take the Ancient Fury mm -hmm. instead. And that yeah. might be their first Gold Fury kill, but they get an extremely powerful objective over it. Yeah, yeah. If, you, if you feel like you're stalling because Fire Giant, like, it's really hard to make ground potentially here, there's a whole other aspect of the game that you can go farm to make progress towards the end game, which just, again, adds different variety varieties for teams to play around. All right, well, let's look at our fire giant then the while we're boy. here, huh? Yep, back to pit a little bit, huh? Yeah. yeah. We've got a new arena here. We've got, a, um, there's a new feature hidden in the back of the arena there. There's an interactable. Another interactable. Yeah, another interactable that you can. This one, I, I enjoy using this one a lot. Yeah, this one opens, uh, actually allows you to temporarily change the fire giant. Oh, arena that's sick. Path, but it does a little bit of damage to you. It does. It, it costs you 10% cost. of your maximum health. Yeah, we wanted to experiment that with door. that a little bit. But yeah, the fire giant himself, he may look familiar, but he's gotten a lot of polish like a lot of our other characters in the game. He and he's got so some sick. new mm -hmm. abilities. Um, so he has the Magma Slam. You're going to we'll get owned here. Knock oh, away. yeah. I'm, I'm absolutely going to get destroyed. I need to walk out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. We're, we're, we're saw, God real quick. <laughs> yeah, there we go. You saw the Magma Slam there. Um, that was that big warm-up circle in front of him that'll knock you away. And um, that will also uh, spread out these three additional boulders, which will do more bonus damage. Um, he also has the uh, Ragnarok Fury. Similar one that you uh, know from Smite 1. This one's very necessary to make sure everyone who's fighting that's Fury right takes here. damage. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this will float over people who take damage and it does more damage if it's just you. And then we have the Fire Blast, which is this really large warm-up cone area. And then it has a really long, persistent, like, burning area that that's you don't a big area to stand too. in. Yeah, mm -hmm. so this causes the whole very raid mechanic-y, yeah. right? right. Mm -hmm. It gets Everybody so hectic. rotate, yeah. Yep. It also, that field persists after the fire giant dies. So, like, the, the, it the lasts most. It's full duration, right? Yeah. yeah. So, there's, there's been a lot of times where, like, you're doing a fire giant fight, you know, you even take it, but then the, the cone is cutting off the players, like, who want yep. its, like, escape path. Right. So now they're actually in a really bad aggro spot. direction matters a lot in this um, version of Smite, um, which is a really strong skill that, um, you know, high level supports and um, who take the gold fury master. It matters even more now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and also, there's some, some interesting spicy changes to the buff. Uh, first of all, you might notice it looks oh, different. Those effects are so sick. He's yeah. on fire. <laughs> so we wanted the, the he's on fire feel. We wanted this really cool uh, visual for Fire Giant that just made you feel powerful, um, fit the thematic goals like we have almost in the old Smite 1 cinematic. Mm -hmm. right? I love it so yeah. um, much. And it back. stacks better than two belts and just a bunch of buff belts on people, you know? Yeah. Like, it's still very clear. You can tell when a team is on fire. You can tell yep. when a player is on fire. Um, and it also has some unique uh, mechanics, too. So now... Every time the fire giant dies, 
the um, strength, intelligence, protections you get from it get stronger. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. So you get strength, intelligence, and healing and mana regeneration the first kill. But then every kill after that, it gets protections and increasing protections, and it increases the strength amount. It does not increase the healing, mm -hmm. I believe, because that would just be probably too OP. But like I said, <laughs> anything is open to change. Hey, if, if it, it does, does yeah. let us know. AJ Give said that, like, back. we're sure about that. <laughs> like, I think. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, we're, we're still making a lot of changes to the game as we go, right? Oh, yeah. Every day. They're, they're, these types of things open to discussion. But oh, yeah, you can do the, the thing? I believe the exciting pieces on the fire giant. No, I haven't missed the most exciting thing left. about this. Oh, no, you're going to show this part. Okay. Uh, well, I actually don't saying. know what happens here. What's the cool? You don't know? No, I've never seen What's the cool down on it, Paul? I actually don't know. Oh, you might have to stand here for a while. You might have to stand here for a while. But, but. I'm just saying, if this if this door closes on you, it might not be good for you. So maybe you just pay attention to when it's when it's when it's closing. I believe oh. it just kills you. Oh. <laughs> that is so awesome. I love oh, that. It just executes you. That's incredible. So watch out for the doors closing on you. Oh. I hope yeah. someone pushes someone. In I've there, died right? twice to that in playtest. Yes. There's, there's a lot of stuff on this map. We didn't get into all the detail. We wanted to call it real quick. There are um, XP rules. Um, splitting works the same as in Smite 1, and there is a lowest level XP split. So you have to split with a teammate, but if you're the lowest level, you'll get 45% bonus. The Just want to shout out to the environment art and the level design team. There's a lot going on you know, behind the Super scenes. Super shout outs. Yeah. Yeah, make everything look amazing. Make things look performant, You know, completely new lighting system completely new texture systems and unreal you know we're talking a lot about gameplay today but there's deep dives to talk about um oh, yeah, a lot yeah. more of this other stuff we had one with christian last week that came out oh hell yeah about lighting yeah dude i love i love the way the water goes like down from the top and then enters into those like designated spots there and there's a little bit of spill out that's so yeah cool. there's um Ooh, just... the crab that's where you went this time where where <laughs> Wait, is he? what oh, there he is no way he's hiding on top of the <laughs> i had oh, i actually had no idea that's where um, i'd be if i he, were him. he's bounced around a little bit that's, that's a lot of you know, today. Some easter eggs Allied and Finch are also on this map. People, this is the number one question I probably get when talking about yeah. conquest. Infamy system, jungle mechanics, all this stuff. No, they want to know, and they are there. Of course, it was yes. very important to Always. us as yep. a team yep. um, to make sure that's there allied. too. Yep. Um, any final shout outs to the map? There's some new visual effects to highlight backdoor protections or immunity by of structures or yep. The, sh the shield. Uh, uh, Han, can you just speed and show off chaos a little bit? Yeah. Oh yeah. They go into the danger zone. Yeah, yeah we're going into the danger zone. So here's what the chaos team will see. Oh, you got a fiery portal in the background over there. Oh, that's nice. With some really cool shadowing. You got the just like completely different base aesthetic. It's open on the top. You got the titan back there. Those huge axes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like those like t like bone tusks and stuff in the back. Yeah. There's just so much cool wire on that. I, I guarantee you there's going to be some people who, who hop into a match and the first thing they're going to do is miss a wave because they're looking all the <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, this is so good. Well, yeah, that's Conquest, everyone. Super excited for everyone to hop in, but... Let's talk this about is the it. only game mode in Smite at the time. Yes, the Besides only game our mode practice in, map in our you alpha can enter. Yes. Um, and there will just be the one normal Conquest queue, and there will be Customs Customs available. as well. Yep. Customs yep. and normal Conquest queue. Uh, ranked is planned for later, probably around the beginning of beta. Ooh, okay. Um, we slam those cues? <laughs> oh yeah, we're slamming. Like, MMR right. will be in effect, so you win. You you win your matches. You'll start playing against other people who win their matches. If you're right. if you're five person pub stomping, it won't be long before you're running into the other team that's five person mm. pub stomping, and you're gonna see how competitive this game gets real quick. There we mm. go. Yep. Can't wait. Excited. Well, let's start talking about gods here. Uh, we can stay in game as Pond gets uh, get ready. Uh, yeah. Gets ready, but yeah. Uh, AJ, I'll pass to you. Talk to me about gods in Smite 2, because there are a lot of differences. Yes, yeah, so the high-level goals in Smite 2, again, uh, kind of before we talked about flexibility, right? So we want flexible systems, um, but we want unique kits. Yeah. Mm. So we've readjusted a lot of the, the strength and int, the base stat system are adjusted to make sure that each god's unique abilities is really their special feature yeah. and what shines the most. Um, each god should bring something new to a team, either it be one big feature or a combination, or a unique combination of smaller ones. So what we've done is made base stats and items and other systems support this. Some of the ways that we've done that is the strength and int system mm -hmm. we've already talked about, so you can build different builds, all builds, and um, many characters can benefit from both builds in some way. Um, you could even go max strength, ADC, Anubis, even though he doesn't really have much. I did ability. it once. Right. Yeah, I've tried it I as well. I've tried it before. Test. It was okay. Yeah, <laughs> life steal, life steal. Oh yeah, ADC new is not bad. True. Um, and another big thing to mention is the base stats. We've done a very big rebalance of base stats to make all of the gods' base stats actually a lot more similar to each other. Right. Mm -hmm. So being a tank does not have such a massive default advantage as being a tank did in Smite One. So if you want to play a support 
you know, ranged intelligence support, you can do that better than ever now. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what matters about that kit is that what your kit has, what does it bring to the table? If there's a big AOECC on that um, you know, traditional DPS kit, it might make a really right. meta support as well. Mm-hmm. Yep. So we wanted to make sure our God designs always allowed for that opportunity. Um, the other big change was we always make sure that something new to explore for each yeah. Smite 2 kit. Um, some of these have more than others. A lot of these gods are ones that I think generally everybody loves, everybody likes, have felt really balanced a lot of our first gods. But, you know, as we get into the future, there might be gods that need bigger reworks. There might be gods that get bigger changes. You'll even see today a couple gods getting f- complete ability reworks. Oh, yeah. Yep. Some other gods just getting new stuff added. But we wanted something new to explore for everyone. Yeah. Um, things like uh, ADC Zeus or Crit Ymir, uh, yeah. from just the system alone are amazing. But then there's also a lot of individual ability changes too. And we're going to highlight all of that in just a moment. Yeah, that's yep. right. So uh, as we get ready to go in game here, uh, AJ, you hinted at it earlier, but uh, God Text. This is a feature I've wanted personally for a really long time. And oh. I know the ambassadors, Olympians who have worked with us over the years, I've also wanted a really long time. So we have a completely new um, description system that allows for short and long modes. Yeah. So the in general intent for the, al- for the alpha one is the short description is as short as possible. It's a very yes. straightforward, functional, no flavor, no nonsense, tells you what the ability does. And the um, it only gives you the relevant gameplay variables too, specifically the scaling amount. That was the number thing that people always were curious about is what stat should I be buying to make this stronger? So that's all that shows up in the short. But then you can right click. So you have to press alt yeah, that's now. Right. Can we, we go can in game, go in yeah. game and, we can and, show and check it, right? it out? Yeah. So for PC, you need to press alt to hover over your abilities to read this as opposed to the K screen. If you press K, there's a little reminder text, I think, or we're adding that to help you remember what to do. Mm-hmm. And for consoles, you can D-pad up to navigate over these as yep. well. You can read each ability or you can hover over your god's face to read your passive. And every ability has that button to expand or collapse to give you more details. When you expand, you get a whole bunch of very specific, functional, long description bullet points to help clarify additional things, tell you projectile pass-through rules, tell you immunity rules, things that were always hidden from players in Smite 1. As you can tell, I'm just so stoked. Yeah, so stoked. <laughs> Sorry not to curse on the I love, <laughs> I, love, I, love here. I love the color coding here. Yeah. And we have color coding to show, we have color coding for um, soft CC, hard CC, damage buffs, debuffs to show you like what's damage, what's buff, what's debuff. We have unique um, CC icons to help you see all that. We have range radiuses, cooldowns. We have multiple ranges and radius for things that have multiple things. Yeah. Like we tried to, for the long description, be like everything you might want to know is in the long description. But for the short descriptions, people can just get a really quick look and it'll default to short and you can toggle between them. So uh, it's been great. Like literally just yesterday, I was like, I, oh, what, like I need to know this s- small detail. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm in game right now. Let me just check out the right. long description <laughs> instead of all tabbing and going into like my spreadsheet. Yeah, we've been stuff. using that a lot. The, they are pretty definitive as much yeah. as we can. Mm-hmm. And you know, please, you know, feedback on them. If you feel like something's missing, let us know. Um, we're already th- thinking about ways to improve this system, keep adding to it, maybe mm-hmm. adjusting the color coding. So we've already got a lot of ideas, but we still love to hear yours. Um, yep. So let's see, okay, oh, what yeah. are you gonna read next? Yeah, we're gonna go into, uh, before we hop into on here, he's of course at the top of the list, but definitely wanna list out all the gods available in Alpha Weekend 1. There are 14 of them. So of course, uh, on here, what... as you see <laughs> okay, on screen, you got it. You got it. Anubis, Athena, Bacchus, Bologna, Kernanos, Chalk, Fenrir, Kukulkan, Loki, Neith, Odin, Amir, and Zeus. Going to be our so first is. Sounds right. 14 so playable characters in Smite 1 Alpha, but I did want to address the elephant Someone in the might room, be missing, huh? or the sorceress in the room. Uh, <laughs> uh, Hecate. Uh, Hecate is not going to be an Alpha Week in one. Uh, AJ, did you want to kind of go over a little bit of the thought process and the decision there? Yeah, we're taking some more time to cook. There we go. As, as the kids say. <laughs> yeah. Let us cook, baby. <laughs> we really, like, we've been doing testing. We wanted, we wanted to take that seriously. Yeah. We wanted to show people that we're serious about that. But mm-hmm. also, she did just need the time. Mm-hmm. Um, we have had internal play testing and just the reactions to the deep dive and the social, um, social comments. We've, we saw all, all yeah. of it. All of it. <laughs> all of it. I read it all personally yeah. and internalized it and felt it. Um, oh. We really just wanted to make sure we make a really cool character. Yeah. So we've got a lot of cool things we still wanted to do that we were running out of time. I don't want to make excuses or make complaints. We just have lots of cool stuff coming to the game. We're going to take some more time on this one to make sure it's awesome. We are building this entire game from scratch, remaking everything. Mm-hmm. So making a brand new god on top of that was a very different oh, yeah. experience than making mm-hmm. a new god in Smite 1. Yep. Um, so we are learning a lot as a team and the community is already helping us with that. So Hecate's going to be absent for a little while, but she will return 
hopefully cooler than ever. That's yeah. right. Yep. Just yep. keep an eye out on social media. We'll have more news and info when we're ready to talk about Hecate in a little bit more detail. But until then, just let us cook. <laughs> yeah, to it. That's right. All right. Let's talk about gods. Let's go back in game and let's check out on here. And we're going to kind of keep it casual look here. We're not going to go over every single ability in depth, but we're just going to go through the kit. And we did want to take some time to talk about some of the unique to smite two aspects of all the gods. So of course here on her looking sick here, that ultimate is insane. Yeah. So, you know, like you mentioned, we don't need to talk about the fact that he looks better than ever, he sounds better than ever, and all those beautiful things are received from all the gods. Too. Yep, exactly. Um, the Anher's main changes is, mo uh, a lot of it is on the Shifting Sands, where one, the the closer you are to the Shifting Sands, actually the, more, the heavier that actually effect is. Uh, two, you can cancel it early, kind of like, you know, we did for Ymir's Wall. Um, and well, three great. things, unfortunately. So <laughs> yeah, it actually it does it does end the cool uh, start the cooldown early as well. Mm. Yes. So ending yeah. it early is actively high skill ceiling min maxing there you this go. character it's now. Good to know. And it is strong to do. Yes. And then you can also place the shifting sands behind you a little bit, so that, like it kind of snaps behind you. So that way, yeah, yeah, there you go. So you can all you don't have to turn around and do that. You can literally just do that while you're, if you're fleeing. Forward. It's very good. It's super yep. useful. Yeah. Um, the other thing, as we've mentioned before, the ultimate has a different pacing to it, and it's it's uh, more weighted towards the back end. So that final hit will be a little bit larger and deal more damage. Um, and man, has this been super satisfying to use in test. It feels so good. Right, yeah. I love it. The anticipation of that final shot, and it's got more range now than it used to have, and that has felt really, really strong for him. Uh, on her is truly feeling better than ever. Oh yeah. Uh, between being able to, to manipulate your pillar a little bit better, your pillar being even stronger in general, and then this ultimate is is just crazy. Look at those effects on that pillar fade in and fade out too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know. Whole team was cooking. All right. We, we, All right. I wish we could spend an hour. Yeah, I know, right? AJ, I feel like show. I got to throw to you for Goobus. Oh, you got, <laughs> we're going to, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I'll take it, I'll take it. We'll, um, so. uh, just real quick, just the super temp. Obviously, we're uh, we're in switch class and doing command stuff, so passive meter stuff like that. They're overriding yes, on top of each yeah. other. Vision slots, yep. stuff like that. Stuff that would be there in normal games, uh, we can address. A lot of that is there. specified on the patch notes too. Yep, which yep. characters are intentionally missing pa passive meters or have temp yep. passive meters? Which characters don't have updated icons yet? We do intend to update all of that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. For everyone. So if it's not there, and you're also getting a little it's bit a of little a head, bit, a preview yeah. build, so you're seeing some things that won't be in the mm -hmm. alpha. But yeah, good, good, good looking out, clumsy. All right, so Gubis. Let's see the kit first. Oh. I love that new ultimate anime. All right, yeah. so the main Ooh. new things for Nubus are, one, he's got a brand new passive, the scales. So his, pass his passive is a bit of a callback to a smite one item. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For every 10% uh, of HP he loses, he gets additional lifesteal and protections. So he just gets harder to kill and more threatening as he gets lower. Now, his uh, Smite 1 passive just gave him a massive soup of stats. And this will be a little bit more relevant when we get into the item section, but we are doing a lot of base stat adjustments and stat availability adjustments. Overall, some, some power creep resets and some item stat bloat. And in which case, that requires uh, the gods to get a bit of that too. Mm -hmm. So like some things might look like, oh, that's a very, like maybe a more specific set of stats or stats in a different number, but they are generally really powerful in the new context. Yes. Specifically lifesteal, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Mm -hmm. Him yes. being able to get this additional bonus lifesteal for free is really strong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and him getting the extra, extra protections makes him hard to take down even when he's max DPS build. Um, the other big change is the ultimate. It had a similar rework to on her, except the big change with Anubis is his is front loaded. So if you watch closely, that first hit of that burst does a significantly larger tick of damage. Um, yeah. What is it, like a 6x ticks? We we calculated it out to do as much damage as it would have done if he was just ticking yeah. the whole time the animation takes. Right. Yeah. So instead, you get that first up front burst. It makes it really important, and it makes it really valuable to just hit those wrap combos. Yeah. Um, he's got some other fun little things, like Mummify now does damage, and it scales off strength. Yeah. Right? And it does physical damage. Yep. I, I did a build with this, if you and I won the game. <laughs> was no, it was it did your it team though? win the yeah. game too, or just you? I, I was doing damage because, again, like uh, we'll get into it when we get to items, but there is a lifesteal physical item mm. that actually is very good to splash on him mm -hmm. because it just actually helps him do the surviving that he wants to do more often. Every god's True. basic attacks, whether they deal magical or physical damage, have 100% strength scaling yep. and 20% int scaling. So if you buy full strength on... Gubis, your basic attacks are hitting just oh, as yeah. hard mm -hmm. yep. as any strength character. Mm -hmm. It's just the things in their kit that make them have attack speed stims or protection shred that yeah. essentially make them even better. 
uh, carries, but that's hey, if you stun, can't. you get like two free crits. There it doesn't go. mean you can't carry Goobas. <laughs> uh, some of these builds are memes, but we wanted to have more yeah. meme builds and more viable builds. Player creativity, I don't think right? You can't have more yep. viable builds without also having more meme builds. Yeah. True, right? True. So, like, those things go together. <laughs> All right, let's talk about Athena now, the goddess of wisdom. Pond's gonna get us set up here. Yep. Take it away, Pond. This one's this is one oh, yeah. we're working on. Yep. So Athena, the first big thing that you're gonna notice is uh, with Reach. Um, actually, we'll just go through the kit real quick. Go through all that stuff. We'll get to mid lane. Things should be look pretty familiar here. We got Reach the passive, charge in, hit. We got Taunt, which the bots will not taunt. So, mm, but, okay. but they're taunted. Yes, yeah. they are taunted. <laughs> uh, you can see it there. And then we'll get a. Oh yeah, we need an ally. Uh, oh yeah. 20. Another cool thing you can see as well is that anytime an enemy is hit, you'll see the the damage text fly in. And the reason why I'm pointing that out is it has a symbol for physical and magical damage. So right there, you can see the little swirls. That's magical damage, which gives you kind of a preview. There's physical damage with the swords. Nice. Yep. Oh, Keep thanks. an eye on that, everyone. Yeah. So Athena, the main changes for her are with her ultimate. So her ultimate ability now actually provides an immediate shield to the target. And whenever you actually teleport to a target. Uh, when they die in Smite 1, they actually go straight up and down in place, your Athena does. You actually go to the target. And the main reason we made that chain was we wanted to make sure that this ability is meant to save someone on your team. And there's a lot of situations where ulting someone at low health, the mitigations just didn't really help them. They were going to die anyway. Or ulting someone low to try and save them. If they did die, you're now not joining the yeah. team fight and you're unable to help the rest of your team. This just makes the choice much more straightforward, much less metagamey in how you want to try and approach it. You're really using this to really save your teammate, come in their clutch, and then join the team fight and, and taunt everyone and help in the best ways you can. Um, aside from that, obviously Reach, a really, really powerful tool in regards to like a Polynomicon jungle build for Athena in Smite 1. Well, it's can crit. And it, <laughs> again, all basic attacks work off strength. And so we've had builds um, where Athena is really utilizing that reach to just absolutely throw these huge reaches that just do a ton of damage. And similarly, her one actually scales off strength as well. So your charge in and one actually can be a really, really high burst combo with strength itemization. So you have a lot of build opportunities available to you. And the one is a faster charge now. Oh yeah, that's right, that's true. We also made the one a faster charge. You should be able to notice that's a lot quicker of a pacing. And she doesn't turn to a giant ball of light when she dashes. <laughs> she actually has like a, a true dash animation, so she's always present on the field, which I think is just a nice touch. We have a lot of these nice touches all over all the god kits, but looks really good. Yeah. And yeah. her shield's like a fidget spinner now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was looking at that. She just rotates. That's sick. Me as Athena just, I know, yeah, right? just spinning the, time. the shield. Yeah, no way. Oh my goodness. I'm a bull of it's a small nice. We also, we also DJ just Pond have, is the spin king. He's yeah. always spinning something. It's been, it's been really fun working with the teams and getting also a whole bunch of, uh, we should move on, but we also got, a, <laughs> we got an owl that appeared yes. right underneath her. Just right. like oh. a nice, a nice little nod to, to oh, Athena. Or tie-in, yep. Yes. Just, just a lot of really small touches all over the place. I'm sure really players excited will you guys notice this that. as they hop in tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, let's talk about Bacchus. I need a drink, like, you know? Like, Yo, me <laughs> too. Let's, uh, this it's is, not one I'm not going to make that joke. Anyways, uh, <laughs> yeah, so Bacchus, um, he, he's got a really, really cool new mechanic that I'm a huge fan of, and it's based on when he takes a drink. So after he uses Chug, his first ability, his next basic attack is enhanced. It's kind of like a built-in polynomicon, but it scales off of his protections. So he can, bu he can build that bruiser, tanky play style that he's really known for in Smite 1. Of course, you can go any build you want in Smite 2. That's a big point of it. But this is just a way to maintain that I that present identity of tanky character that also does a good amount of damage. Uh, Bacchus really does that really well. I think solo Bacchus, I know Haddix has been playing a ton of it in Smite 1 recently, but I think it's better than ever in Smite 2. Uh, he has a lot of good strength and int uh, scaling combos. I believe Belly Flop scales off of strength and yep. does physical damage. It's, he's physically jumping on you, mm -hmm. so it doing physical damage makes, makes a lot sense. of sense. And so you can really do some fun stuff with the, the belly flop into enhanced auto uh, combo there that he, he feels really, really good. And we've also significantly lowered the post fire on Chug mm -hmm. so that you can actually get to that attack a lot faster. I believe it's like even cut in half from what it is in Smite 1. Mm. Yeah. It really help enable this. Nice. All right. Bologna is up next. Our poster girl. Yes. Yep. This is one of my favorites, I think. Yeah, this yeah. One, this yeah. she's got some really cool new things. Um, an important, a nice thing to call out while we're running back to the mid lane is that just like the base stats for characters are different now. Yes. So keep that in mind. Everyone gets base strength. Yep. Strength is what um, kind of dictates your base 
basic attack damage even if you don't buy anything. So you do get base strength um, for that, and that means that strength-based abilities generally have point. lower base damage mm -hmm. because they're already getting a significant amount of bonus damage scaling. They effectively never have zero in their scaling component because every god has base strength. Mm -hmm. Sure. And right now in the current build, everyone has the same base strength. So that gives, like I said, a lot of those gods that we were talking about being meme ADCs are like, we've had, uh, I, I know Pawn for sure has stomped a, a playtest or two as physical jungle Bacchus, similar yes. as you can with Ymir, because belly flop, or you can queue up the chug, belly flop on someone, guarantee the hit with the chug. Chug scales up protections, but you still get bonus damage off it, and it's just a hard physical. You can just imagine it's a full hunter physical basic attack yep. hitting you, right? So the base stats change in Smite is Smite 2 is really unique. And tomorrow, when we have our Dev Insight show... Ooh, spoiler. Oh, I'm even willing to bring up the spreadsheets <laughs> oh my on gosh. air. He's if that's the what receipts. the people want. Right. Yeah. Bringing the receipts. <laughs> but we have some really cool stuff to show off in that regard about how, spa how base stats have changed, um, how we clamped them to be more similar to each other. Yeah. Yep. You know, um, that things that play into that creativity, flexibility, skill, skill seeing, skilling, and uh, competitive yeah. goals yeah. we have. Yep. And another thing to note as well is that, like, obviously, we're in the alpha state, as we've said it several times. There's a lot of things that are changing. There's a lot of things that are changing rapidly. Whether it's, you know, Zeus ADC, I'm just, we're just calling that out. I was like, maybe yeah. Zeus ADC is stronger than Zeus Magical. And maybe there's basically what I'm trying to say is there's imbalances that we are going to be ironing out over time, that we're going to be tweaking over time. There's going to be a lot yeah. of things, whether it's the items, the gods, the map, right? Gold, XP. There's a lot of things that we're going to be constantly be tweaking. So if you oh, wait, see something that feels. Sorry, are you saying that we might not have balanced the game? from the very start oh like gosh. it might not be all right aggro i'm gonna cut you off we're ready to go back to the game i want <laughs> to see Milana. i'm getting Let's a go. message Let's from go. production to <laughs> shut up okay. oh okay. yeah speaking, <laughs> speaking of of alpha uh the passive meters stacking on top of each other there that was what uh, uh, was. so obviously not an issue that you've run into but oh, funny uh, that was what was happening there so B Bologna, let's let's see the kit oh yeah Bologna's one of those takeaway ones of like everything just looks oh, so yeah. damn good mm -hmm. So the uh, main new feature for Bologna is her passive. So yep. She still builds it up by gaining stacks by attacking, but now she gets a specific unique stat for each sta weapon stance she's in. So you get the um, movement speed, or if you want to bring up the full tooltips, because it's a lot of stats, but you get the um, movement speed uh, for, uh, or sword and shield gives you, will give you protections and, or both protections. Hammer gives you percent strength. Mm. Yes. That's so if good. You want to go full damage, Bologna. And Scourge gives attack speed. And all basic attack stances still give the movement speeds for stack. Correct. The really cool tech here is that it transfers as you change stats. So you can yep. build up your stacks. And then when you change stances, you will be now max stacks, getting the benefit of whatever your stance you're now in. Mm -hmm. yep. so you always get the movement speed, but then you can switch between the three. So it makes being in her stance and fighting even more impactful and more important than it was in. Smite one, right? There, you already have the, you know, they still have their unique triggers, the cleave damage, the heal, um, the building up of block stacks, but you also have those additional buffs on top of it. Yeah, I think the heal on the 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 three changed a little bit as well, right? It doesn't require three hits now. You just get a little bit on every hit. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's it's true. Small it, adjustments like that. Yeah, a lot of balance adjustments. The damage, the reflect damage on her block stacks on her shield bash now are protection scaling damage. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yes. So the tankier you build Bologna, the more ref damage you'll reflect, the more thornsy you'll be. Okay. Yeah, she has that kind of identity as the anti-inhander, where she's really, really good at stopping you doing that. And if she wants to build into that, she is very good at doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just think, you know, her character, her, her, her char character fantasy is that she's this master of all these weapons, mm -hmm. right? And now you feel like you already have the different in-hand chain for each weapon, but now getting different stats based on which weapon you have equipped makes you really feel like you are mastering your inventory mm, as yeah, you're playing very in a thematic. way that, that we, uh, we didn't have before. Nice. All right, who's Ooh, next? We saw a lot of Kernanos earlier, but can go a little bit more in depth and talk a little bit more about what's going on with Kernanos here. I want to commend you all first on not using any class names so far. That's very impressive, team. Oh, <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, we didn't even talk I, about Yeah, that I haven't even. Me. We put this on the patch notes, but we were going to mix it into the God segment here, but there are right. no classes. No yeah. class labels yeah. I, I don't in see class. Smite 2. <laughs> we didn't want, we didn't want, again, as we said, the, the, 
we didn't want to specifically box characters into specific roles. The class system has has benefits. You know, we liked it, but as a as a place to start something new, as a place to try something new, we wanted to do this where they don't have specific roles, uh, specific classes anymore. Yep. Instead, they have a couple of keyword tags. There's an example in patch notes. There's a couple of yeah. keyword tags of what are the kind of features that God excels at, and you'll pay attention to their basic attacks. You know, being ranged or melee or magical or physical, and then you'll pay attention to their general um, offensive and defensive potential. Um, and yep. base stats, kind of. That's all like high level summarized. So we're uh, specifically avoiding using that term here now. Getting you know, trying it out, getting used to it. It's a little tricky at first, but um, we think the creativity is going to pay off. So yep. no classes know. in Smite Two. No classes in Smite Two. Don't need them. So okay, let's see the Kernanos kit, and then Clumsy can tell us about the cool features. Yeah, Kernanos's passive is where the most of the changes happen here, so we can pull that up as well. It's it is um, the passive or the passive on the one. On the yes. Sorry, <laughs> I even I get the one. You want to take it away? Adrian? You want me to go this one? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So like, um, the main thing is just like there's a big rework for scaling. Oh, it's so pretty across the whole kit. Kernanos is a true hybrid ranged attacker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's he can get so his ability two and his ability four deal magical damage, and have int scaling. Um, his ability one has a bit of mixed scaling, but generally, you know, people benefit a lot off just building physical for the summer damage for a true carry kit. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then also the three is a physical damage with strength scaling. So it's a split kit. Yeah, and, and the two two it does also have strength scaling. So the initial hit scales off strength and intelligence, but the area scales off intelligence. So if you want to go more mage like where you can have better clear, you want to be going more intelligence focused and, and using Bramble Blast. But the direct hit is still a very strong strength scaling ability. So there's a couple cool things on this kit. The first one is the effect of how we can use scaling to scale utility effects like on Shifter of Seasons. So generally you would only see scalings on damage in Smite One. But in this ability alone, you see a protection debuff gets it more potent off of intelligence scaling as does a slow amount mm -hmm. so you actually slow gods more slowly <laughs> if you've got intelligence <laughs> yeah they get slowed the same speed but then they're slower <laughs> and, you know, uh. and we did away with a lot of heal scaling in smite yep. one but now we're using it as kind of like a way to encourage building intelligence on gods that may not build it. Yeah, that's actually a really yeah. yeah, that's a really good point because previously one reason that we didn't was if a character scales off uh, physical power and you give them physical power scaling, well, now they're becoming tankier while also building the damage. That's just that was, free healing. Yeah, it's just free healing, right? Whereas now we can go, hey, you're a mostly physical scale scaling character, or we can give you this heal scaling in context of a more ability focused kit. The fact that we can freely use these different scaling factors means that we have a lot more flexibility to actually let you, if you want to go high healing so that you can sustain in fights, we can actually let you build towards yeah. that rather than it, potentially breaking kit design. It's also a lot of fun when like you have um, hybrid items or or your supports or utility effects where like they give you a stat that you might not primarily benefit from. So for example, in this case, maybe your support's getting a spoiler for like Triton's Conscience, providing you intelligence and it's making your heal stronger, even though you didn't necessarily opt into that place yep. on yourself. We've never really had the concept in Smite 1 of like, oh, this god can just like build differently and then a part of their kit gets suddenly way better. Yeah. Yep. And that is a common theme in a lot of other MOBA style games and other multiplayer games. And like now it's like, if you really want to build like a high int, support Kernanos, like you can do that because you're going to be healing yourself for a lot more. You're going to be dealing, because uh, this is a flat heal plus uh, plus bonus healing. Um, yep. It's not lifesteal on his uh, one anymore. You're going to be slowing people, shredding people a lot harder, and you can combine that naturally into a kind of bruiser tanky build like you would right. in Smite 1. That was just something that wasn't possible yep. in Smite 1. So that's something that's really cool here. And uh, one final note on Kernanos is too, that like Kernanos also was a bit of a bit of like he just does everything too well. Mm. And so like everything had to be super undertuned to like get him balanced. So kind of splitting his kit kind of forces him to choose. Like if he's all in ADC, which he is one of the best ADCs because of all of his procs and in hand um, synergies. And just be able to shred. Now it's going to weaken his abilities a little bit because those are int abilities. Um, but it's not a, it's not as big of a nerf maybe as I'm playing it up to be because we also intend to really um, support hybrid strength int builds in Smite yeah. 2, and you'll see yeah. some like really cool items, items. and yeah. Kernanos is one of the primary users yeah, of some say, of those speaking items. Speaking of hybrid strength and builds, let's talk about Chop. Good <laughs> segue. Yeah, yeah, just like, yeah, nice. yeah. There you go. Nice. 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 Move along, yeah. designers. I'm Move using along. these run back to lanes as part <laughs> yeah. as time to talk about more high-level god goals that we didn't get at the beginning. Yes, yeah, um, exactly. Well, it, you know, the hybrid Chalk, I think, some of our friends and family playtesters are like one terrified. Of the, one right of now. the most flexible buildable characters in Smite 2, because you can yes. build him like full tank 
you can build him like super high int and they and the the character plays differently mm -hmm. the kit actually feels different depending on what you get you, he's he was a good jungler in, in smite one too yeah. right just off this kit and strength Go scaling crit off those like really that. huge attack chains yeah so he has a really cool flex for yeah Ch chuck's main um change is something that you know we've wanted to approach in smite one in so many different ways but now we've got the opportunity in smite two which is throwing that axe well you can press that ability again to actually recall it early so it's no longer going to have any issues with your torrent if you want to use a one two combo you can still do that but now if you don't want to actually teleport you're using your two while your axe is deployed well you just call that axe first and then you can do your two in place Feels a lot better. So awesome. you can throw it out here. You're fighting this dude. You cancel it. Yeah. You can now freely spin. I've yeah, used this example every so time nice. I play him. It's also just like makes like you know juking the opponent so much better, right? It's like yeah. oh, if you want to throw it over here, well, it's the mind games. Like I, I may go there, I may not. Now I actually have that choice. Skill ceiling component, quality of life component. Quality of life. Yep. yep. Uh, there's a little bit of change on his passive as well, where now he gets a, just a tiny bit of heal as well when he procs that cooldown reduction. Yep. And uh, rain dance. Um, and hybrid scaling. So. Yeah. So going back on that, he has a lot more um, in scaling on his utility. So it's kind of like what's on CERN knows. You have some in scaling here for his heals. It's <laughs> oh, and the torrent protection. The torrent buff. protections. Well, that also one's really else. interesting yeah. too. So there's yeah. going to be not just damage and you know these the healing effects that we've seen maybe in Smite One scale, but now there's utility effects that are going to be uh, that are going to be changing based on your scaling as well. So we're, we really want to play around with that. We really want to play around with like you might we're trying uh, strength and intelligence. Maybe we'll play off of different types of scalings in the future too. All right, let's talk about Fenrir up yeah. next. And Khan, I'll throw to you. Oh, did you I got to, no, 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 while we're running, while we're yeah, running, while I'm we're just going to say yeah. stuff. Um, <laughs> we saw there at the brief end, you saw in the tooltip, Chalk used the word displace. Yes. Mm -hmm. A lot right. of times people in Smite 1 would get confused about the term knockback, which was like the umbrella term for back, the CC, knock but up, that included knockback, knock, knock, knock up, knock away, grab, pull, etc. Yeah. Now we're just going to use the word displace to describe all of those. And then in the long description, we'll tell you which direction and which style there of it displacement, is displacement it is. Yep. So yeah, this kit. Guys, I'm gonna no next god Fenrir memes. Though, I know. Yeah, right? The first yeah. patch. <laughs> He's here. Ooh, Travis. Oh, no. such Travis, a loss. What a mistake. Oh, uh, I yeah. think Fenrir is my favorite looking update for yeah. like two gods. Yeah. This buff alone, like on the two, just insane. Yeah, I love the crazy. chains. So the main change that you're gonna see on Fenrir is. We wanted to really encourage that builder uh, spender playstyle of his passive, which unfortunately all the meters are stacking, so you can't quite <laughs> see his passive meters super clearly. Uh, but um, every ability now, if you're not at five runes, is a builder. So your one, if you successfully hit a god, will give you runes. Your two auto already gives you runes. Your three, every brutalized tick will give you a rune. And your ultimate will just immediately max you out. So if you're not at full runes, each ability can get you there a lot quicker. Um, other than that, the spending style is very, very similar. It's basically the same. Um, but we just want to accelerate that loop a lot more effectively. Um, additionally, some subtle changes like the, there's full damage on Brutalize for the AoE, which also really helps with wave clear, especially we notice as we're having like the smaller uh, Harpy Camp. That was a nice touch. And then probably the most meme potentially really breaking thing. We'll see. You guys are going to have uh, fun right, with right, it. Right, right, right. Break the uh, game. Uh, Brutalize uh, can now crit and trigger uh, the in-hand item effects as well as ability effects. So Hins brutalize. Hins brutalize, crit brutalize, brutalize uh, Braggy's heart brutalize. There's a lot of You haven't seen that item yet. You haven't seen that item yet. <laughs> but you, you'll get there. You'll get there. Um, this is really, really cool. It was something that was on his initial kit when he was first released. Um, and we feel like we have the balance tuning knobs now that we can bring this back. And it could just be a fun different play style for him where he can really burst people down with Brutalize, but you're going to be squishy going for it versus a more tanky, bruisery style play style for Fenrir. So just a lot of ton of fun stuff here that you can have in Brutalize. There's a lot of, look at all the long description. Look at all that yeah. juicy information there. Look at the uh, new ability the art the, as well. The hit time yep. and the um, duration of the channel. Yeah, it's Lots just a ton of, of really cool information here. All right, who's all next? Right. Cuckoo. Yeah, Cuckoo. The danger Khan. noodle. Yes, it, always uh, one of the mid lane favorites. Uh, Cuckoo Khan, you know, very all straightforward kit, wants to just hit his line skill shots and deny some area with Whirlwind. That play style is still there. Uh, the only big differences for him in Smite 2, uh, now his passive only counts item mana, so you have to be a little bit more intentional in order to get the most out of this very, very strong but easy to use passive. Uh, and something really, really cool oh, man. is now, well, first of all, the effects, of course. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We did kind of a whole kind of color thematic shift with Kukul Khan to make him feel like he had a more unique identity. Smite 1, it was actually kind of like 
intended to be like realistic wind, which was just kind of like gray or almost even invisible in a lot of places. Yep. And a lot of like strobing effects that were a little hard on the eyes. So there was a, a big kind of color theme change here. Yeah. Speaking of a uh, little change there, you see the AO2 normally blue, but when he steps inside his whirlwind, it turns red. And that's because if you use your two, while inside your own tornado, instead of getting your movement speed buff that you know cleanses, slows, all that kind of stuff, now we're missing us with all the survivability crap. It's just <laughs> it's, it's a dash that does damage and slows. It doesn't have the movement speed afterwards, so it's a much more aggressive option. Uh, but it allows you to to really try and do that burst combo for Cuckoo really, really well. It it really catches people off guard, and just having something conditional uh that is you know a little bit more narrow i think is a really really cool way for experienced kuku khan players to to flex their their knowledge and their ability to to get the most out of a kit so i'm excited for us to do more abilities like this that are more niche more conditional but powerful when you get the right opportunity to use it this one was just also fun and it's just like it's one of those, it's one of those stories where it's like hey you know we we wanted to do more interesting things for these for these gods and then we go like oh you know Kuku Khan we can do stuff for the passive and then like AG and Pawn one day was like let's just do this and I was just like listening to their conversation while working on the side I'm like we're doing what and then like a week later it's in the game and I'm like oh sick this is awesome faster than that with yeah. all of our cool yeah it was like new, the next uh, day tools or something. Yeah, 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 the Unreal right? Engine like, five I know right based on testing based on like the new things that we can do just like yeah these we just got it in which is awesome that's awesome all right Loki is up next to much joy or god everybody maybe, loves to hate who you are yeah <laughs> so like people might notice that he is the maybe the only god that's uh we, oh, we have fenrir too so like there's a little um those are the two probably default junglers but i do want to <laughs> call people call it out to encourage people to try jungling on some of those other gods we've you know ymir can do it athena, can do, can, it. Do it. athena <laughs> can do it so like uh, it doesn't have to be Loki mirrors every game, but I know a lot of people are. I mean, Loki is just super popular and super fun, so we're probably going to see a lot of it. So, oh, are you going to demo the kit on the jungle here for I, us, Pon Pon? Well, I want to try to get the, him uh, to fire, but I don't know if I can do that in this environment. So you might not be able to see. Bot's shoot should work. Not not in the environment we're specifically in. Mm. Okay, that's fair. So um, we, there's one new feature of Loki that we might not be able to demo today, um, but let's just demo the kit. Beautiful. So a um, lot of familiar pieces here, but the, um, some couple of cool new ones is, uh, first of all, Vanish will completely reset its cooldown off after a successful kill. Mm -hmm. yep. So you can stealth in, stealth out. Yes, god, god. god. <laughs> it's a kill. And kill, yeah. and like, Hold kill. On. <laughs> Not kill or assist. Right, just kill. So like you can actually just stealth in, god. stealth out now. Um, yep, so now you can see I have cooldowns on, so it's, it's on cooldown. We kill, I immediately get a stealth. Ooh, we can even talk cool. about those death effects, which are super sick. Right, we had, we do have new death effects that we felt like would be more responsive, more oh, more specific. So and unique. Those accolade it's icons look slick too. Yeah, <laughs> and all this stuff is like, I mean, accolades. This is the first version of accolades. We're already working on yes. future versions on 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 the functionality, but um, yeah, already looking cool. Thank you for for killing many many gods as Loki. <laughs> the other one that we were talking about was a blind. We've changed the way right. the blind works. It now kind of puts more of a shadow dome over a blinded character visually, kind of like Jibalonke does. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. This Loki blind was very noisy, visually noisy, kind of like, you know, uncomfortable to a lot of people. So like we were trying to think of something that had a more specific gameplay effect yep. and a more consistent and less grating visual style. Mm -hmm. um, you'll also see some thematics like the a the ability to is a little bit more shadowy themed now instead of the neon green. Um, and I will also call it like for people who are going to look into these gods really closely in the alpha, which is obvious that we do have a known issues list for a couple gods in the bottom. Um, some of the way the Loki alt changed around the there's no cripple on his ultimate right now. Um, we hadn't made that CC yet at the time. <laughs> Shipping this build. It just we have to make everything you know in some order from scratch. So they're just that didn't exist in the game yet. So those are things and uh, the attachment rules, mm -hmm. some of the more complex tech. programming stuff. These are listed on the, the known issues for Loki as well as like backstab, um, custom numbers, things like that. So check out that section when you get there. And um, I just feel like he's a good god to mention that on while we're here. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, take a look at Neath now. Another god with a very big playstyle change. Oh, yes. I mean, yeah. I think this character is a int mid character 
first now. Sure. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I can see her being played in both lanes. Oh, oh well, starting what? right off. What? Yeah. What? <laughs> Leap can now go over uh, walls. Backflip Play, over played, walls. Uh, created ones. Or as long as you have a walls. valid landing. I had to show it off that way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> good. Through the big window. Love it, Bond. And, uh, so, Neith, yeah, like we said, she's one of those uh, gods that definitely took the hybrid role and, you know, was a little bit more serious about it. The three is one of those uh, ones where we'll also be doing uh, magical damage in the two as well. Um, Spirit Arrow is going to be hybrid. Ulti is going to be a hybrid. Uh, other things there. So we wanted to take Neith, and we know she's going to be a, you know, a pretty popular god. She's one that where she has like a, a play style that's basic and easy to understand, and it's where we want to take the skill floor and skill ceiling, and really wanted to make sure that we don't we create a little bit more depth to character, but we don't necessarily alienate the players who love her. Right. And so one of the big changes that we did is around her passive and with around her weave. So her two now, Unravel, is going to be the weave generator. Whenever she uses this, she'll always create one weave in the center of the deployable and one weave per god that she hits as well. Um, her three, her old, sure, sure, her one or two, that combo's still there. That'll be there to explode the weaves, and you can explode all of them. And her three now is not the weave generator, it's also a weave spender, and it can blow up those weaves in the exact same way. So the weave explosion is now kind of the passive itself, um, and... Ooh. The, the we want to make sure that her she has a gameplay that's more based around weaves. I mean, she's like the, you know the weaver of fate. We need her to play around with that gameplay a little right. bit more. So she also gains a stacking buff based on weave explosions. You can see that on the buff bar as well, stacking up to three times. And so intelligence and attack speed. abilities will only deal like one type of damage. Mm -hmm. Not all the time. Some places they're split, like we showed Kernanos. So like. Um, Neith has some abilities that deal magical or physical damage, but then she can benefit off of both intelligence right. and strength yep. in certain scalings and in certain amounts. Yes. So you can do, you can still build traditional carry Neith and get some strength scaling on most or all of her abilities. Most of her. But then if you yeah. build high int Neith, you can really just be focusing on dropping weaves and blowing them up and more of a ranged nuker and not really using your basic attacks nearly as much. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's still very viable and it powers up the abilities a lot. Yeah. Oh, that uh, spam, spamming bots yeah. really yeah. have Yeah, the, bot, the bots have a very long name. Had a rough effect on that tab screen. <laughs> yeah, I, it, it, like, I remember the first time I played Neath, you know, I tried to 3-1 do the old combo. Yeah. I, like, oh, I, see, I don't know about this, man. Yep, like, there, there was it, a lot of concern it, about that. For yeah, sure. this so is fun. It's so poor. And then two games in, I was like, oh man, the 2-1 combo feels, it's so much, you know, you don't have to use your escape. You, yep. you're not and that's a big one. Up. We were like, thinking about that. We're so like, easy. why is her escape the thing that creates like the, the opportunities in lane and in field? That's kind of just a trap for casual players as well. For new, for experienced players, like you wouldn't need to utilize. Yeah, like, those are things we player. often ended up reworking in Smite One because of community feedback all the time. Yeah, right. And, and now if you're, you're running away. You two your feet, then and turn then you backflip and it, 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 it roots the enemies well, behind you. It feels so this good. this character's skill ceiling definitely higher. Oh yes, much. I mean, we played around with a lot of stuff. The ulti used to drop a weave as well, and then we realized that's broken as hell. So we <laughs> yeah, you can do that, and that would immediately kill the person. Yeah. Yeah. Shout outs to the alpha playtesters. There we and, go. And shout outs to Zima making change. Yep, and another thing that changed there as well is the LT used to like used to be stealthed inside stealth bushes during that time, and now you're revealed because you're in an active channeling state. So you can't just hide inside a bush, LT one to blow up a weave and like destroy that one person. Um, but there's still a lot of fun stuff there. Yeah, and that's an important rule for all characters, like channeling. You don't just want to be hit with a giant invisible area, someone's yeah. channeling, yeah. like that just yeah. looks weird and wrong. Oh well. Mm -hmm. All right, okay, we're on to next? Odin next. Okay. Odin time. Odin. Odin. Only, only, I mean, we're good, yeah. We're gonna have a lot of gods to talk about in any Smite 2 show because yes. we're gonna always have we're gonna have new gods, but also the ported gods mm -hmm. and the reworked gods. Yep. Mm -hmm. So Odin is another character where we've leveraged a lot of the strength and int scaling as well. So his kit's gonna be very very familiar, and we actually had done the adjustment where his pulse uh, was only two when we moved mm -hmm. the homing. Yep. Smite one also did that change, yep. so we are mirroring that change as well. But his everything that you're familiar with Odin is still here. So you got the two, you got the bird bomb, you got the pulsing. You got the stun throw, you got the auto attack stim throw, you got the, the cages to lock everyone inside. All that stuff is very, very familiar if you're an Odin player. His passive is also still the, when targets die, it's just been simplified down to two targets rather than stacking up to four. And you can see here it's giving strength and intelligence, which is useful for him because uh, while lunge is a purely physical ability, his shield is a lot more interesting in terms of strength and intelligence. So it actually scales off of uh, strength as well as intelligence, and it scales even more off intelligence. So if you want the biggest shield possible, you want to be going intelligence, and that will scale into the damage of your one. Um, additionally, his Gungnir's Might, 
the pulses are intelligent scaling, but the actual throw projectile is physical, and that matches on the ultimate where the projectile that follows targets if they leap out of it or leave it uh, is also physical. So lots of opportunities here for you to play more kind of that runic, more mage style Odin, um, really focusing on these giant shields and consistent damage output from these pulses, or you can play the more standard strength Odin and have a very similar experience to what you play with in Smite 1. And that attack speed stim is even stronger in Smite 2. Yes. And in a, a little bit more stat scarce balanced um, stat pool, it's even more powerful. Yeah, like, he it is a really meaningful contribution from the kit now, much more so than I feel like it ever has in Smite 1. Yeah, he he really is the is the example character for I think once we get into the itemization, his kit the thing that it really brings to the team is that flexibility, that ability to initiate, that ability to be the support role where you can really protect and en enable your team. And a lot of the items that he can build just work so well with his mm -hmm. kit. So he has a lot of additional ways of playing in here, even if his kit feels very similar. So it's really exciting to see what Odin's gonna be able to do with the tools that he has. Mm -hmm. And one thing what to look out for as well, huh? You know what time it is? Oh yeah. Ymir, Ymir is here. Let's go right into it. You have one more thing to say for Odin. Yeah, while, it wasn't necessarily for out. Odin. I was just saying nothing to be careful or to, to have a look out for when we're looking at these gods as well. It wasn't just the like items and scalings, but some of their cooldowns changed quite intentionally too. We wanted to do a pass to make sure that things didn't feel exactly the same as in Smite 1. So you might see some gods that have like a very specifically reduced cooldown or increased cooldown. Yep. So here you see the famous Ymir uh, rocket jump. Rocket jump. Yeah. Yeah. Thumbs, you had that line in the, the keynote, right? You know, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he, he, Ymir just feels like a whole new god, really. I mean, doing the exact same things, but in a oh, way. Oh, the two now, yeah. Straight fall, you two. Straight fall, you two. Yeah, he can, two. Oh you two. Yeah, he can now move. Look at it. While he's twoing. Nice. And this feels <laughs> unbelievable. Like, being able to adjust this aim. Again, yeah, running away. You start it, you turn around, oh. lay it down behind you. It feels awesome. And Ymir, I mean, for our old alpha and beta oh. players of Smite 1, uh, you have you a lot of them miss that face punch Ymir, the crit Ymir, because it scales off of frostbite, which increases the damage to you, all that kind of stuff. It's back. It's so good. Clumsy literally almost like killed me in Dude, two seconds. I love <laughs> playing Ymir uh, jungle. It's yeah, so much just fun. the wall Strength. also applies frostbite. The wall yep. applies on the knockback applies frostbite. By. Yep. Yep. Yeah, just so many you want to talk about a god Behind who can make you. plays now? Oh, yeah. Ymir is like, he's always been a playmaker god. Uh, he is now the playmaker god, in my opinion. You can just do so many things with this kit. You can build him so many different ways. You know, our like, Rainian uh, famous Smite 1 Ymir main, like he's going to be able to do a million different <laughs> things, I'm sure. Uh, it, it, it's just, it, you can play 10 Ymir games in a row, build 10 different ways, do 10 different things for your team. It's awesome. The legend of face punch Ymir. Yep, Only a myth back. to most Smite players <laughs> I know, right? has finally returned. It's Ooh. back. And I'm sorry, Agar, you did a lot of talking for Ymir, but I feel like I have to throw it to you. Oh, yeah. Agar yeah. yeah. <laughs> was like, bring, bring it in. It. Let's, Let's go. Bring it back. Yes. Okay, so. Those who have followed, uh, you know, my podcast, the Backliners podcast, all that kind of stuff, they will know that I have been on the show, right? We're doing a show tonight to talk oh, about all this. You. No, no, uh, I have been a notorious Zeus Shield hater. The, uh, oh, you know, in sure. my mind, this is the risk reward character where if you make a mistake and I hit my chain lightning among two gods that are bounced, you know, together, I'm going to be able to do insane things. If I miss, oops, I died. Sorry, team. I'm not that useful. That's the whole draw to this character to me, always has been. And this is one of the things that I'm most excited about for people to get to play with is Zeus's new identity, because I think he really does feel so different in a really refreshing and fun way. So AO1, still chain lightning. The two, no shield. Instead, it's this stim where lightning comes down, hits everyone around him, applies a charge, and then he gets movement speed and a bunch of attack speed. And we've been talking a lot about ADC Zeus, Strength Zeus. It's because of this ability that it enables. It, it's really uh, an in-hand stim that allows his kit to feel more in-handy and tie in with that passive that he's always had. Uh, you might notice, our, the longtime Zeus players out there, that Pawn is detonating, and it's not removing these detonate mm -hmm. stacks. It's not this OP. It's also stunning. Yeah, it's yeah. also stunning, by the way. I was, by the way, I was getting there. Players. It's back. Uh, the stun is back, but it doesn't remove the detonate stacks. So you, it, you don't have no cooldowns most of the time, but it allows you to stun and then keep in-handing for a lot of damage uh, without right. feeling like you're dropping these detonate stacks and then you're losing your in-hand damage and all this kind of stuff. Uh, I think Zeus does have one of the bigger playstyle shift changes of the Alpha Weekend 1 gods. Uh, I, play him in dual lane. I'm a play I, him in the jungle. I, I, the jungle. I think yeah. jungle Zeus feels really good and dual lane Zeus, you know, he, he definitely losing the two 
uh, in smite that he has in smite one does hurt his wave clear a mm -hmm. lot but it enhances his pvp capabilities you know it's a minus in pve plus in pvp and i think that that really makes you think about this character in a whole new way I, yeah. like i said zeus jungle i think is fantastic zeus adc feels strength great. zeus strength well, zeus, I, I think you, zeus i think you have even more flexibility than that i think you could play support zeus and you yeah. can build CDR and tanky, so you could just be in the middle of the team, constantly applying charges. And with low stunning CDR, people. stunning people, oh stunning oh people. God. That General is a lot of early exists. pressure oh, that turns into that. like a tank. I think there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with this. Yeah, so what Zeus have you done giving cleared. them this idea? Like, yeah, no, they're, they're, like I can think, you know, I'll just talk about all the ways to play Ymir. I think there are so many ways to play Zeus and it, I just like I can't wait to to get to play him against a bunch of new people. Like, there's also a little sneak preview it. here of a feature where the enemy's health bars yeah. have three pips that light up for the number of charges. Yes. They're not lighting up currently. Potentially, yeah, the bots are bots, bots are a little bit yeah. weird. It works a, like a lot of our features against bots right now are a little bit buggy. Uh, they work a lot better against players. I'm not sure if this feature for Zeus's charges is actually in Alpha 1 or not, but you'll be able to see that if you have charges, and you can even see that as long as you have vision of the characters. You can see it over walls. Mm -hmm. yep. Previously, yeah. you have to see the little orbs. Yep. Now, as long as you can see their nameplate, you can see that UI element that shows you if they have charges. Uh, yeah. yep. Yes, it, it feels is really good. Sick. So much more clarity for him. It, it, it makes a huge difference for sure. All right, those nice. are all 14 that's, I was oh, gonna say. that's all for have the we gods. Have we had to intro 14 one. gods at a time? I don't know. <laughs> I feel like we kind of speed ran that though. 14 minutes. <laughs> like, yeah. It's only been four hours. Yeah, four. Exactly. Oh my gosh. Well, <laughs> we've still got a lot to go over, and this is probably even bigger than the gods, I might say. We're going to yeah, talk about think. items now. So while Pong gets set up, AJ, yep. I'm going to pass to you for the high level goals. The high level goals. That's right. So again, we're really trying to facilitate the creativity with these items in Smite 2. We want to increase the, skills ca the skill cap in this way. This is probably one of the most skill ceiling raising changes in the whole game. Yeah. Um, we want to provide something just new and different from Smite 1. I ge generally try to avoid, we don't really go for change for the sake of change, but the change here is part of the advantage of right, these right. other goals. Yes. Um, and we also want to create items that have more specific and intentional purposes. So that was kind of what I talked about earlier. Uh, a lot of items in Smite 1 have gotten kind of adjusted so much over the years that they do get, a lot of things just do a lot of everything and do everything well. So we're really shifting that a lot in Smite 2. So avoid items that do a little bit of everything. Um, specifically reduce the item stat bloat. So that's just like the numbers you'll see will be in a little bit smaller amounts. Mm -hmm. um, or you'll see, you know, most items only have two stats. Yeah. Very few four stat items, which is, you know, very different from Smite 1. But I'll tell you a lot of the, this doesn't mean that the whole pacing of the game or the DPS has changed in a, in a negative way though. A lot of the gods were designed with this in mind. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of number two. In general, I'd say if anything, like time to kill is faster in Smite 2, especially in the early game. Mm -hmm. yep. um, in the late game, it's similar, but it's all more variant because the way the gods are designed with have the more flat base stats and the way the items are designed in this way, you can really hyper index into being hyper tanky and doing less damage or you can, or vice versa or anywhere in between. Mm -hmm. so you get a lot more variance. Um, so that's where we get the strong trade-offs in build choice. Like if you really max out your protections, you ain't just capping prots for free anymore, yeah. right? <laughs> you have to really specifically seek out the highest prots items. You have to think about more, is my opponent's doing more physical or magical damage and which one should I over index yeah. on and build into those? Cause if you, those trade-offs matter a lot more in the new, in the new game. And we wanted to make sure that the passive and active effects are impactful and meaningful. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, we're just getting started. Yeah, exactly. that, that's getting, the yeah, big yeah. thing. There's a lot of room for this system to grow, but there's, it's also significantly changed already. So mm -hmm. we're yes. going to go back in the game. We're going to look at a few more things and we'll walk you through all these, you know, this big system change yep. here. Yeah, we wanted to walk people through how to get to this practice mode that I'm going to be playing in. Um, so if you guys want to hop to th my screen, even though I'm not on a map, you can definitely hop we over here. We'll show the in-game UI. Yeah. Uh, very pretty, right? But if you click on any oh, character, get us out of here, production. Get us out. Get out. No, we're good. We're good. No, our cameras. To oh, the mouse. sure. Yeah. To, oh, yeah. We have to see like literally mouse. us. Can't yeah, actually, us. Uh, Practice good. button. There yep. you go. A lot of the front end uh, UI is still in a temp state. Oh, you know, yes. things look. Some things look nicer than others, but a lot of this is still in very temp state. Ooh. Nice. This map though is completely final and looks amazing. Yeah. <laughs> As you can tell, has everything you need. Yep. So this is the first iteration of jungle practice. You can navigate to any god from the front end and hit the enter practice button to go into this map and you can safely leave it through the escape button. Uh, we will be doing a real jungle practice that looks like real environment. It looks awesome, it's already in progress, but this is what we have for now. Yep. Yes. 
Um, other thing to note that something that we didn't see here, if you go into the normal conquest game mode, you will actually be prompted at the beginning of the game to mm, see an auto buy like uh, fly in. So you'll see a couple of different Everybody options. will be Everyone presented will with the auto buy yes. option. Yep. Yes. And? and one of them will, well, there's a couple different options. We've worked on those ourselves, but you can also just hit the manual if you don't want to opt into the auto buy. That'll be fine. You can go and manage There's multiple itself. options to choose from is the big yeah. change there's a, from Smite yes. 1. There's a, a couple of, of different um, archetypes. Heavily, heavily curated, you know, I went through and made a face punchy mirror auto buy. Yeah. <laughs> and there's, you know, if you want to focus on active items as a guardian or just more like passive stats and just help my team without having to worry about using a bunch of active items. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of really good options for you. You know, we talked about Neath having a lot of different play styles. You can, there's an auto build option for Int Neath, ADC Neath. You know, there's a bunch of different options there. Uh, mm -hmm. The big thing to note, and this is just for the alpha weekend and, you know, until we get it fixed. If you buy or sell anything, including potions, that will cancel your auto buy. Mm -hmm. That is not the for ultimate. For the rest intent. of this game. For the rest of that game, right. So, you know, just be on the lookout for that. Uh, if you set auto buy, it's truly hands off. Yep. If you, got, if you got a mana potion that you didn't want, just use it. Do not sell it because uh, yeah. you will be sad. Nice. Right. All right. Well, let's talk about uh, beads and wards first before we start going into to detail about the. Uh, the actual item shop and building. So these are not really items anymore, yeah. right? We've done away with the relic system, but and we have a very new item system, but we also kind of just have two default default buttons that everybody gets, and they are beads and ward. So yep. you can purify, everyone gets purification, can cleanse themselves CC immunity, everyone gets ward. Mm -hmm. um, these run off cooldowns, and um, the active item system, which we'll talk about more as we go, yep. kind of replaced the relic system in a lot of ways. So if you want more effects that worked like relics, you can now build tier three items that will have that on them. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a few things like CC immunity that are just extremely important to Smite. Specifically, yes. we felt like CC immunity was the single most important one, much more important than something like Aegis or any of the other relics. Mm -hmm. So we wanted every god to have CC immunity from level one, out the gate, ready to go. And we also still wanted to encourage uh, warding and not make it feel like warding was any sort of like negative trade-off in the early game so everyone has a ward you have no excuses now ward yeah. <laughs> they, they, they had vision shard didn't use it you know what oh, i mean seriously. Like, we can't help them you know so uh, um ward does have a method to be upgraded to a sentry ward mm -hmm. in the shop um there is no way for you to adjust or change or sell your beads at this time Mm -hmm. um, so every other item you buy in Smite will go into your in Smite Two will go into your six item inventory slot, yeah. including consumables. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's right. So we can talk about potions first. You've got the classic health and mana potions. Right, as you can see here, a lot of the items have new art. Not all of them yet, though. So keep that in mind. And also, mm -hmm. um, lots of things. You know, there's a lot of pieces, new pieces and parts to this shop to show. So potions work similarly as you're used to. You can buy yep. them in stacks. You can fire them off. There's 3K potions for int and strength. The main shout out to show there is everyone can benefit from both of these now. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you can even try buy the 3K pot you want the most first. If the game goes long enough, buy the other one too. Yes. yes. And they don't stack. You can only buy one of each. And they last uh, forever for the rest of the match. Forever. Yep. So you don't. Oh yeah, buy that's a good call out. Yeah. Yep. yep. So Pawn, you want to walk us through just like the kind of high level. Um, component item building and what the visuals in the shop do to, to convey that? Yeah, so the biggest change that you're going to see in the item store is that we have moved to a component-based system. So if previously you had the mace tree and you had your tier one mace, and that would lock you into four potential options that you could get by the end of the game as tier three options, um, which was good for kind of simplifying the flow of how those items would go. But it didn't allow for you to really change partway through. If you started your tier two mace and realized actually none of these mace upgrades are good, I need a different source of power, um, you were kind of stuck in that mace tree or you had to sell and take a cost penalty. The component-based system really makes it so that you can actually go, I know I want strength now, and you can build it. And you can go like, okay, cool. I know that I want to continue going strength and I can go into my tier twos like Skegox, which are just more strength. And from Skagox, I can see all the things that could potentially build from it. So now what you do is you buy these component level stats, knowing that I want to be going for this. And because you're building these bits and pieces of these items over time, you can then combine them into the final item that you're, you want, basically tailor made from the stats you knew that you wanted at the time of purchase. And so similarly, you can see here, yeah, I went to Axe first. Here's some tier twos that are going to be really, really useful for me. I'm like, oh, cool. Let's go for uh, strength and cooldown uh, rate. So now I have strength and cooldown rate, and now I can immediately see, here's all the things you can continue to build from that. 
So it just creates this kind of natural flow of, I know what stats I, I want at the core, I'm gonna start building towards them and I will naturally kind of end at the correct item that I really wanted to go for, or I can pivot halfway through. So that's really what the component system is about, is you take these tier ones, you merge them up, and then you continue to merge them up into the final item. And you can see we have a lot of final oh, items. Yeah. Lots of stuff for you guys to play with. It's going to be really fun. Yep. Yeah, I think a big thing, you know, for players who are getting used to building items for the first time in Smite 1, you might read a guide or something like that and say, okay, I need Executioner. Uh, it has attack speed, but I can't buy bow, uh, you know, Hunter's bow. That's attack speed too, but it's not the right attack speed in Smite 1. Right. Yeah. You, need, you need Light Blade. In Smite 2, really good point. Yeah. there's the Executioner. I know it has attack speed. I'll buy a bow. I know it's contributing. Yep, it's right you know? here. The, the, any stats that you're buying that, that you ultimately you're going to have with the tier three uh, are going to have components that build into that. You know, you're not getting cooldown rate out of nowhere. You're not getting, uh, you know, penetration out of nowhere. It's coming from these individual components. So like Pond said, you can just kind of, uh, I need, I know I need a little bit of this, a little bit of this. What are my options if I want strength and lifesteal? Oh, I build these two. I see what they combine into and I know every possible combination from there. So it seems daunting, I know, but I think ultimately it will will make the process a lot smoother for players. A lot more intuitive too. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It has just a lot more flexible design. Yep. Mm -hmm. Have to have four items per tree, have to be like this. And then yes. those also had really weird ways of comparing strength to each other. So like yep. it was very just perception-based balance. The Smite One item store are very driven like that. Obviously perception matters a lot in balance, but mm -hmm. this type of system gives you true stat efficiency values that you can follow. <clears throat> yes. So when you know exactly that 10 strength is worth 450 gold, you can build the foundation off of that for all your other items to make yep. sure that things stay in reasonable amounts. Yeah, oh, and um, we did. <laughs> yeah, and we have, and we have the spreadsheets. We have spreadsheets. Yeah, we'll, we'll, bring up, we'll bring up the spreadsheets. So we wanted to show off a lot of these tier ones just to kind of get this across. So, so Axe is the strength item, Gem is the intelligence item. Those are probably what most people are gonna be starting right. with. An important thing to call out is that we changed the starting gold yep. significantly mm -hmm. in Smite 2. So you only start with 800 gold, mm -hmm. which lets you build one strength or int item and some potions or a non-strength rate item or let you build two non-strength rate items. Yeah. So you have a lot of different ways of starting your co um, your combo loadout. Although potions are pretty good. So most people end up, I think, yeah. I would generally advise getting the one stat item you want the most and, and a good set of potions. Yep. Um, another tier one item I wanted to call out was the Ruinous Poison, which this one doesn't have a stat on it, but this is the anti-heal passive at rank one for only 500 gold what value right huge <laughs> it's a world of value <laughs> you can, um, get this on your basic attacks to get an anti-heal debuff for 500 gold at any time you want from you know very early on if you need to and it builds into the three core a strength in, um anti-heal item an int anti-heal item and a protections anti-heal item but this one's just unique so i wanted to call that one out and i think it's really cool that's cool yep let's move on to uh tier twos and uh a fun one here Manchubo. Yeah, Manchu Bow is one of our premier tier two items for the attack speed tree. Um, one thing that we want to shout out about here, so it has a passive of all targets that you're hit by your basic attacks take some flat bonus uh, physical damage. And one thing that we're doing with these components is this. So this this tier two Manchu Bow is now going to be building into a whole plethora of different tier three items. And all of them have some sort of similar effect that's based off of that um, that passive from the tier two. They might not be the exact same effect. You're not building the exact same thing. Uh, there might be one that does take a direct benefit, but in general, if you're building that tier two with a passive unique effect, you can expect that the tier threes kind of play off of that theme. Mm -hmm. So this yep. is kind of the attack speed in hand proc yep. theme. So generally you're gonna get in hand procs of different types above that. It is also a cool time to talk about this new concept of uniqueness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As you saw Pawn earlier build two axes. <laughs> and uh, shout outs to PBM for the first alpha oh, the first is. early close tests where he built the six Manju bow build. Um, and the passive stacks. And yeah. and there was a time based on the feedback, you know, we had tier threes uh, not unique at a time and now we've made them unique. So like, you know, you right. you, you can't buy all the tier threes in the world. Right. Tier twos where we're uncapping that for now. Tier twos and tier uh, most and tier, tier twos and tier yeah. and, most tier twos, all tier ones yes. are non-unique. All tier threes are not. We're gonna be experimenting this in the future. And generally we want to, in general, we want to encourage non-uniqueness. Um, and there are some issues where, I mean, you, people might find some items that say they are not unique, but the passive still doesn't double trigger, things like right, that. So right. we have a lot of room to, to explore with that, but the, the foundation is here. Yep. Yeah, I know we were talking about it. When PBM ran that six Manchu, uh, Manchu bow slot build, there's some conversation like, do we want people to do this? And like, at the end of the day, we're like, 
if people are having fun with it, let's let's yeah. just let's. Yeah, just we were having that combo yeah. in the room with them as yeah. they were doing the build, just like <laughs> hashing it out. It, I, I mean, it was good. I don't think it was broken OP. It was like an well, early game yeah. rush, like power spike builds. But then it was the six kins that was really the problem. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the the, the non-unity yeah, into that six was kins. Threes. That was that, that was was, that was very good. <laughs> no six no kins in alpha one. Sorry. Yes. Um, but we do have a lot of exciting tier three items to discuss. Yes, I know, right? Let's. Uh, we've got a few tier threes that we want to walk through. We're not going to go through all the items yeah. because there are a ton. Right. They're all on patch notes for you all to read. But we did want to highlight some. Uh, so Bloodforged Blade is going to be the first tier three that we talk about. Yeah, getting some survivability for these strength characters. You know, your junglers might like this. Your, you know, in hand based characters might like this. Uh, your Zeus jungle, uh, Zeus jungle <laughs> attack, yeah. physical Definitely, damage builds. Yeah, almost always featured a Blood Forge blade, and it's just a scaling shield based on your your strength. Strength scaling. Uh, so you don't just get to splash it for free. You know, you actually have to invest in strength in order to make the shield even better. Um, but it's also an active item, right. so you know, no Aegis as we've as we've covered. This is the new Aegis. This is your your physical Aegis right now. Is this is your best option to survive burst the vast majority of the time? Is going to be something like Bloodforged Blade, and it's uh, you'll be building it a lot if you're building strength in hand characters for sure. This is also a life steal item, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and life steal has some significant rules changes in yep. Spy Two. Life steal is now just there's just one stat life steal. There's no magical or physical. There's no ability or basic attack. It's all life steal. Mm -hmm. yep. So you buy life steal on Anubis, he gets life steal on his basic attacks and his abilities. There's no AOE reduction anymore, but there is God versus minion yep. reduction. So yes. you get less healing off of minions. So jungle camps, jungle bosses, mid lane minions, you'll get the full calculated life steal percentage amount for God versus God combat. Yep. Yep. All right, next up, one of my favorite items in Smite 1, making its way to Smite 2, Kronos Pendant. Clumsy, you want to talk about Kronos? Yeah, uh, Kronos Pendant's kind of, you know, we wanted to make sure some items are familiar items. It is some of our favorites here. Kronos Pendant is the premier intelligence-based CDR option. If you want CDR um, on any sort of character, but you, you know, your intelligence, and you want to kind of play on that a little bit more, you pick up a Kronos Pendant. It does a very similar effect. It's got your high amount of CDR. It reduces your active ability cooldowns by one every 10 seconds. Um, and yeah, there's one thing that's important there based on CDR too, kind of like we talked about lifesteal, yeah, CDR say, has a change. Same acronym, different name, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> cooldown rates. Rate. Yes. Cooldown rates, I mean, I think we wrote down on the patch notes exactly. Like not the a formula. percentage. It's not a percentage, but basically what we're trying to say is it's, it's uncapped with diminishing returns. So if you get to 40 cooldown rate, it's around 35-ish percent or yeah, something? Yeah, something around there, yeah. yeah. There's a demo on the patch notes. Yep, yep exactly. But, uh, so two, two important things about this. One is that there are currently no item stat caps in smite 2 yes Correct. for this for first anything. alpha build you can go over the attack speed cap of smite 1. you can mm -hmm. go yeah. as you can build all of the cooldown in the entire game the difference is that cooldown now has a diminishing effect as you buy more cooldown yep. and the number it's, it works off of the protections formula there's some examples and numbers in the patch notes um 10 10 cd rate is like nine percent cooldown and then right. 20 is like 14. It's like, it's just slightly less than what it is. And it starts to trail off the more you get. So when you right. buy zero to 10 is pretty valuable, but buying 50 to 60 cooldown rate is mm -hmm. much less impactful. So. I, it's my one players just went through a, a Sphinx's bobble meta recently. <laughs> right. They know true. how good stacking oh, CDR, yeah. you know, it being an additive stat just makes it really, really hard to introduce a lot of sources yeah. for it because then everyone has 40 percent cdr right really so this is one we liked as this design because like you said it doesn't require that 40 percent cap that people have to mm -hmm. tune all around and like every item has to have a nice rounded number that adds to that it just makes it still work yep even if you get it in different amounts it lets us um splash it around the game yep. a little bit more um and it also serves for the temporary purpose of we have no item caps we do intend to probably make item caps we think we'll need to for example lifesteal there is no item cap, and that would be just insane. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't have any sort of diminishing efficiency math. So there is just less not very many life steal items right, in the right. game right now. That's right. intentional. Um, so we wanted to talk about these items to show off these items, show some um, some new items, active items, some familiar items, passive items. We'll also talk about these high level rules. So, yes. yeah, these things can always change too. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And all right, next item up, Screeching Gargoyle. This is a new one for Smite 2. Who wants yeah. to take this one? Yeah, I can take it, and I can also show off the uh, sorting options that we have on the yeah, UI. Yeah, nice. Uh, this one, if you want to just actually see all the actives and you just want to go a six active build, we have someone in our playtest who does that every game, uh, and sure. they have a lot of fun with it. You can hit this active option, and you'll just immediately show you all the active choices. And Screeching Gargoyle is one of them. 
There it is. It's the gargoyle that's screeching, Pond. Yeah, it's the <laughs> one that screeches. So this gives you a lot of magical protection, gives you some cooldown rate, but it's active as enemy gods in front of you are silenced for two seconds with a cooldown of 90 seconds. So if you are facing someone like... Um, has a long channel, or you have like a thing that you really, really need to interrupt when it happens, like Bacchus. You really can't get stunned by Bacchus Belch. You just turn, you screech a little bit. Screeching gargoyle. It. Um, all item VFX, most of them are very, very, very temp. Um, all all sound, yeah. yeah. They're, they're design level temp. <laughs> We're we the ones who did it. We that. are not artists. <laughs> we are not mushroom. sound effects designers. We are. We... I didn't put it on the notes specifically. Uh, <laughs> now we're gonna we're gonna show the mushroom. Yeah, yeah we okay. showed it already. I, so we said we talked talk about it. So yeah, a lot of the art. <laughs> this is not final art. <laughs> don't don't. We be... stole that it's from so some random. He's my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> um, but all item act effects in the game, so VFX and audio are temp, but the but, icon art is coming yes, is final. The, it's, in most cases is final or hasn't been touched. But Screeching Gargoyle is a really cool active item example. This is something that you can pick up and it can be a really strong counter if, you, if your character doesn't have a great matchup, or you can just bring as extra utility as your support player. So just a lot of really interesting things that can happen with this. It's just a very quick silence burst. Um, very effective in what it does. Yeah, it's a, it's a really good example of just the fact that we want to take active items, make sure that they can they have you know particularly unique and exciting effects. Like you said, you you can pick this up as a support, but if you really need to pick this up as an ADC for some reason because you want to silence someone, you know that's going to be integral to your gameplay. Sometimes that matters more than DPS. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or and like just the other day, some magical protections in your build, which is really effective. The other day, I was owning a Zeus. Clumsy was so scared of me. <laughs> owning. He, he I was owning <laughs> for once. Uh, he was playing Odin and he caged me and then would screeching gargoyle me so yeah. i can't just drop my alt and start and beat and start him down with dagger answers. frenzy oh, nice. <laughs> it's like adding a whole nother i'm like okay i know what i have to play around for odin normally but now i have to add in yeah. this extra layer that that was really cool and there is a counter item for odin as well so. yes there is a phantom effect yeah, you, that play does you were asking for it because you I was like, like, please, it? Team, please. <laughs> yeah i didn't buy it though no. <laughs> Not my fault. Oh, man. Not let's my fault. talk about penetration all right totem of death and references to Smite One. Mm -hmm. So there's a, a yeah. like just a quick high level thematic. There's a lot of new items with completely new names. A lot of them are based on very specific mythological references yes. or historical references, but fantasied up a little bit to be you know exciting. Uh, it's not pure art history. Although some of them are references to Smite One. Some of them are direct. You know, like. Um, Blood Forge is referencing off Blood Forge, Kronos Pendant, and whatever. And then, of course, everybody loves the totem, but our Conquest map doesn't have the totem, so we made a totem item. Mm -hmm. When and you buy this item, does do is, is there a sound effect of the the <laughs> world of band? Yeah, we should. Yeah. So this item is a premier um, intelligence and protect or penetration item. So there's a lot of specifics to talk about here that we want to get into. So first thing is you might notice that this gains you protections as you hit people um, with ability damage. So in general, we avoided just extremely high levels of shred. On gains targets. you penetration, yeah. It gains you percent penetration. Yep. Mm -hmm. So two things to know about is one, flat penetration is not really on any items. There is one item that has a flat pen debuff on its passive effect, but there is no flat pen just as a stat. Flat pen is essentially just power times three, mm -hmm. or you know, strength intelligence times, times three, and it absolutely dominates and disrupts the entire power curve of Smite mm -hmm. One. So flat pen is really essentially not in the game right now. Um, and we don't really plan to bring it back. Um, there's one exception, I think, which is the Obsidian Shredder, which lets you shred people's penetrations flat, but it has per level scaling on it. So it keeps it pretty, mm -hmm. it's not really like that hyper early game rush. Right. So you're gonna see a lot more percent pen. The other thing we did is that percent pen is extremely valuable. So we're offsetting it with the straight up inter strength amounts. Mm -hmm. You are generally not gonna see super high int and super high pen in the same amount. Yep. The same type of thing is going to affect items like Executioner. You're going to see much, if you really want us itemized towards shredding tanks, we want you to sacrifice that high level burst towards killing other squishies. And, and that's throwing people off so much. I mean, if you look at the stats, 10% stacks up to five times. Like people are like, oh, this has got to be broken. And then they build that and they expect to deal as much damage to a squishy because they bought it first item or something like that. And you, you just don't, because like you said, the math doesn't line up. More specific counters, more specific trade-offs, you know, more like not, if this item had a hundred int on it, it would just be the best item in, in the game and do everything. Exactly. Yes. But you have to, to build this specifically for those purposes. Other thing to quickly to call out for this is that um, it does not have the once per ability trigger. Yeah, this item specific. Dot characters, yep. so Cuckoo and Anubis use this one especially better yep. than, you know, Zeus can do okay with it, but like mm -hmm. <clears throat> this one is specifically like that, but there's also a more traditional 
flat pen int item that you can use if you're more of a burst character, not a dot okay. character, et cetera. So. Yeah, percent pen. And the percent pen. And that has generally been um, applied to strength and int um, builds in a similar way. Yeah, we talked, we touched on it really briefly earlier that we wanted there to be more intentional trade offs in the item building system. This is a good example of like, we mean it. Like, yeah. we will give you <laughs> all of the pen. This is 50% magical pen. That is insane. You get 20 int. That is yeah. nothing. That's and for the, the for the tanks on their side, too, they have similar trade offs that they're making. It's not that they're going to be both 200, 200 physical and magical protections. Yes. They might be able to spike really high into physical defense, but they will probably be very vulnerable to magic damage because they are making similar levels of trade off on what they want to be doing. Yes. So it will feel. You know, everyone in the friends and family tests, they go, oh, you know, I would have 600 power and 30% CDR and 30% pen and smite one. And we're like, yeah, you would. Yeah. <laughs> Not here, though. You know, you have to really you gotta start somewhere. Exactly. Yeah. You have to you have to be very intentional with the items you're building. And I think it when you when you make the puzzle fit together properly, it, it feels really, really rewarding. Yeah. All right. Next up is kind of a dual topic here. Two items. Dreamers, <laughs> idol right. and avatars. Harashi. Mm -hmm. Did I say that right? Yeah, That's you right. got it. And you nice, need both nice. of them. As yeah, we, I'm going to buy both. As we know. We need Wait, do they both. stack? I haven't oh, yeah. That, no, they stack. Oh, That's awesome. And Fenrir. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they do stack. Who wants to intro these? Oh, man. Uh, I can. Yeah, go for yeah. it. Yeah, these are these are really fun to make because I, I actually got to like prototype the, the scaling system. But yeah, so Dreamers Idol and Avatar's Parashu. These are your premier, this is go time buttons. They give you a lot of strength, they give you a lot of int, and they have an active that gives you 20% of that stat on a long cooldown. So you want to do a giant cuckoo ult, get Dreamer's Idol at the end of your build, activate it, cuckoo ult, and hope that that hit, because if it didn't, you've probably lost the team fight. <laughs> you might be wondering why we're so excited about it, because. <laughs> you activate it. He swole yeah. bigger. <laughs> Sometimes big, we just want to do fun yeah. stuff. And yeah. get big, you know? Yep. That's so awesome. Oh my god. It's like that song. It's a, it's a Doug, relatively right? long duration too. Yeah. Yeah, so 10 like this yeah, 10 not, seconds. This item has a lot of int and strength, but not as many as some other items. We'll get to another one in, in a second. But the it's really about do you want to be really active mm -hmm. in your combat? Do you want to specifically pick these extreme moments to go all in? Or if you just want something that's kind of more consistent, you can get higher int elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, you know, having it on Anubis, you wrap you th you instantly hit your dreamer's idol three alt and get your all in combo feeling really really good like it 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 has that active element that, that feels really engaging. <laughs> so cool. And just to clarify, your hitbox isn't actually changed. Yes, correct. Purely <laughs> visual. Purely yeah, visual. purely visual. Um, and we um, we've kept the scaling reasonable enough that that doesn't create too many gameplay problems. But yeah, we, you can tell that we're just like really like. You just get big, so it's really cool. It's really we're, fun. We're goofy. It, it is just something that we try. It, again, just you like we talked about in Smite 2. Strong clarity for you or have this state active. Yeah, you've got a material right? effects. So like, yeah, you'll go. You'll have a bit of a gold or purple uh, material, and you'll also you'll be big. You'll be big. Nice. All right. Next up is the Nemes. I okay. like the I like this item name. Yeah. So this is an item name, specifically the historical name for a pharaoh's crown, is what it's called. Is the Nemes. I didn't know that. Yeah. I like that. That, that smite can be educational, right? So <laughs> this kind of is the premier passive tier three support item. So like we said, we didn't want to re really do the same traditional starter items at, from level one, mm -hmm. but this is one you can build into to, you're gonna get effic efficiently more health and protections than you would from most other items in the game if you follow the support play style way. Yep. So you can get uh, mi only lane minion assists will give you a permanent stacking buff of magical and physical protections. So good place to start if you want to try to play true support. Um, also other places that it, can, it has, we have seen people splash it late on off tanks and things like that, as long as you really prioritize trying to get it stacked, it can be really strong. Yeah, and we've seen support players also just completely forgo it in favor of other play styles mm -hmm. as well. So yeah. there's a lot more trade-offs to be had. So this is a very consistent option, but there might be other plays that you want to be making. Generally, the thought process from a lot of people has been support is going to be really active heavy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that can be really challenging. Mm -hmm. So we did want to make sure there was a lot of just like strong passive support items that if you don't want to build all these actives, you can still be impactful. And while we're on this topic, I will add one more thing is that we do not have a bunch of the protections aura items. Right. Those Correct. have been removed. Yes. We don't want to just make the whole team tanky as your job as support. We have more specific counter aura item options that are really good. 
Um, we have more um, just cool, unique effects that you can get for getting hit by different things as a tank. And you've got the mushroom. To power you up. You, you can, That's an active, though. And, and that yeah, also that goes really into good the... You want to play with no extra buttons, though. Oh, okay. The no extra button yeah. support yeah. build is, is pretty strong. I'm just saying, the, the, lack of, mushrooms. the lack of warriors also goes into the pen discussion, too, because right. that was something right. that if everyone had Sovereign Heart Ward, you had to get some magical penetration to be able to right. burst through right. that. So a lot... And, and stat bloat. And those are huge stat bloat, because it's effectively yeah. a full item worth of stats for your yes. whole team. And, like, right. All this is super interconnected. Yes. And on the Dev Insight Show tomorrow, we can show you the spreadsheets. And another support item just to call out real quick is Talisman of Purification too because that's a really, really yeah. strong oh, yeah, support item cool. that we were talking about the beads effect and everyone's got a beads. This is you the can get two item beads. to beads your team. And if you yes. just want to be selfish, you can use this to use your, your free beads, but then you can also buy an active and use this as a second one on a yes. different cooldown. Yes, yeah. Being able to cleanse your ally from the Fenrir ult or the Ymir freeze or something like that. Like, like AJ said, I think that in recent years at a high level especially, we've seen support kind of become this you know, using their relics at the right time, really impactful team fight relics. And I think support is really going to get. And that's still there. The yeah. Exactly. Or yeah, even like, more important. Yeah. You, you can have so, really varied active effects that really help your team that you have to know, hey, I need to be near this person because that's who the Fenrir is going to target and all those types of things. It, it, it feel, I think support is as fun as it's ever been oh, personally. Yeah. Let's look at hybrid attack. Uh, damage items here. death metal death, death metal. metal this That's one's sick, sick <laughs> one of our favorites so yep. the thematic inspiration for this is that all of our strength and int items are instruments mm -hmm. yep. designed around that we felt like that was a unique subgenre that fit this well um so death metal has strength and intelligence and critical chance mm -hmm. yeah as well as an active um aoe sort of frenzy effect mm -hmm. So this one, we just love the name and we love the art, so we want to show it off. Um, and also this one is just a good example to kind of, we talked about Kernanos being yeah. able to build into hybrid. This one and Braggy's Harp, which you might as well just show it off while we're here. Yeah, just hit the um, like strength and uh, uh, int Oh yeah, use filter. both filters upon to hit strength. Oh yeah. Because that's just one way of like, oh, you want both stats. Yeah. Well, here are the those, ones with both stats. There's one tank item that gives you strength and int, and then there's also these three. There's an aura. Um, just to strengthen in aura to just make your whole team more lethal, which is really fun. Um, shout out to that best temp art icon I know, ever. right? Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, grab rave, baby. Grab rave temp art icon. We're going to get bullied into that being the permanent art icon. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Just yep. keep it forever. Yep. Um, but death metal is the crit one, and then Braggy's Harp is like the traditional in hand proc one. So yeah. you, and you're going to get attack speed instead of crit, and you're going to get bonus, just bonus flat plus, plus per level damage. And then another thing to mention is obviously, like, you know, us being in the state that we're in, we always want to look into adding more items, whether it's hybrid items, like this list could go on. But also, you can just build a strength item and an ins item separately, because that's right. also a very important way to build a hybrid yes. character. This is alpha. 1.0, the earliest yes. 1.000 you've ever played in Smite. <laughs> this is the beginning. We wanted to make sure that there was like the bare minimum for a whole lots of archetypes. Mm -hmm. So we definitely want to hear feedback on which archetype item archetypes need to have more deep options, which ones need yes. to have more range or which ones could be replaced. Like I said, the only one that I've really called out specifically is we do not have a ton of lifesteal items because if there is no cap, that would just be the only way to play. And so yes. we'll get around to that as we get there. Talking about all of these like different interconnected systems, sometimes you just want to go simple. Sometimes so, you just want a stat stick. Sometimes, sometimes you just, just want, want a stat a pile of I, damage. I buy a gem and a gem mm -hmm. and get a killing stone. Mm -hmm. And I can go, I just want a second killing stone. Mm -hmm. And oh, look at that. It's just, the end item. <laughs> and that's just one single stat. That's, that's all it that's okay. A pile of So, like, we this is intentional, first of all. A lot of people ask me, like, <laughs> this uh, the passive is missing or something like that. But no, this we are assigning stat values to the passives as well. And we have a stat value for intelligence. So this item is just balanced to have just intelligence for this price. Mm -hmm. And we thought this was fun because it just is a strong, like... Um, measuring stick for how much int you can have in a build and, and how um, we want to balance item, other items against it. And it's also just like, it's very straightforward. If you just want to get, you just need a spike of int, this is good. In general, I think this item is very good and people do slot it into most builds. Oh, yeah. I would this. highly recommend getting at least one of these just like big stat stick items in yep. basically every single one of them. And now you can see the like the, the seesaw or the, the difference the scales between Eldritch Ward with your 145 int and then like uh, the death. totem of death with, with like your 20. 20. Yeah. Right. But you've got per, a pen. And even Dreamer's Idol only has 80, but that's assuming you're using that active and getting a lot more exactly. than 145 for yeah. some amount of time, right? So there is it's very interconnected and very shifted. So I feel like if you try to do the math, you know, It'll be a challenge. We've got a lot of it done for you. Mm -hmm. yep. But if you play the game and 
build as you go, follow the auto builds to start. Um, be careful fo build, focusing only on uh, actives and passives and avoiding getting a significant level of stats anywhere. It's yes. a common pitfall yes. um, with the way things are balanced. That's not really related to the component build. It's more so about how we wanted to just like anti-stat bloat and increase more, make more trade-offs, make more meaningful builds. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a mistake that can be made. Um, but in most cases, you can build a lot of different things in a lot of different ways and still feel really strong. Ooh, can you Helm of Darkness, Pawn? Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, we're, so before we close out, list, let's just yeah. rattle off some other exciting items. We have sure. um, an active item called Scepter of Dominion that makes a big... <laughs> oh my god. I'll just, I'll just buy him. AOE. Jade Scepter. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we're talking about our favorites. Jade Scepter's mine. Yeah, let's go to the actives. We uh, have a um, I sort of um, <laughs> golden bow style item for uh, physical tanks and a gladiator shield kind of style item for physical tanks. Those are in yep, there. Those are great. Um, we have a winged blade slash solo sprint active that yep, only gives ours, you yeah. buff, um, speed buff, and slow immunity. Um, we have the helm of darkness. So you want to, here's a terrifying thought. You're in mid lane. You're alone <laughs> oh, in mid no. lane. And suddenly a goobus <laughs> pops out. <laughs> So anybody can stealth with this item. Yeah. It's so Any awesome. god can stealth. It's so awesome. Because it's, it's like, just like we talked about with relics, you know, kind of not being utilized as much, right? The active effects are those replacements. Where blink is something that you don't see permanently built into you, but now you've got blinking amulet, you've got helm of darkness, you've got different opportunities and ways to do a similar kind of thing. Yep. And you could build more of these. We have a lot more build room both. for flexibility <laughs> on their potency and their cooldown. When you had to be restricted to only two, mm -hmm. it... And people were like, oh, but this is a discrete choice then where I can pick any of these two, but it never was. Never right. yet. You actually had to always get like a couple things. It did the opposite of that. So I think in this, in, you know, we haven't fully had pro level meta optimization of the gameplay yet, but we've already seen just so many more ways to use these. Oh items. man, talk about temp So stasis item, it's a very long delay, oh. but then makes this <laughs> orb and this uh, freezes everybody in place. So it makes them damage immune. Yes. Including allies. Allies Everyone. and enemies all become damage immune and frozen in place. Yep. I think the only like exception is So you is, just like, press pause. Towers and <laughs> maybe not even towers, but definitely Titan. You can't just yep. pause the Titan. He will smack you. We tried to do that in a test with, like the first time I was in. Yeah, we changed. Um, the Jade Scepter <laughs> is a big my knockback favorite. and that's not a high int item. It's really yep. good on immobile mages. Really good. Yeah. Yep. It's really good. Yeah, Pond was telling me some uh, more spread. knocking people back into Cuckoo Tournament. Yeah, it's really good. Yes. Yep. Yep. We got my favorite one just because of the mushroom. The yep. mushroom. <laughs> yep. This is a pulse heal, heal that you place down. Uh, very, very good to... When you activate support. your items, you also see the item name pop up in the air, and it will show that to all allies and enemies. And the Hussar's Wing is the cleanse that you can get to yourself. Cleanses, slows, and gives you sprint. Yep. I mean, there's a lot oh, of okay. items. There's a ward active item. There's a lot of cool passive items. Impede. That people are dagger uh, frenzy is really staple for a lot of ADCs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lots of, lots of stuff for you guys to play with. Go to the we passes won't, real quick. Well, let's pull out everything on the actives. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, world a, stone balance. Oh yeah. There's the alt only cooldown item. There's a um, a rebalanced um, soul eater. We got poly yeah, and hydras. From uh, yeah, friends. Yeah, Buddha. Um, you got Jeff Isolation, everyone's favorite. <laughs> Focus. I'm a big fan of the Silken Mail Coat. Silken Mail Coat. Oh, yeah, Silken Mail Coat, yeah. Anti-attack speed and crit aura. Mm, Meteor yeah. Hammer is pretty solid. Yeah, right, Meteor, Meteor, Hammer's Meteor Hammer is kind of like new Golden Bow, but for tanks, and Dagda's is kind of like new Glad Shield, but uh, more for tanks. I like Hand of the Abyss. This, this one's a really sick item, too. This is a yeah. hybrid intelligence strength item, but through the passive. Yeah. Gives you yep. basic attack damage and int. So, obviously... This is just the beginning. Yeah, we want to make beginning, even more sure. crazy items. We want to make we have a list more of some we got a lot intense stuff actives and passives that do crazy stuff. We want to add more items in general, but this is a good rounded start to kind of feel the system out, make sure there's something for everyone, um, and just start playing Smite too. That's right, and that's a good segue as we close our item section, just to kind of set expectations for players before they yeah. hop in tomorrow tomorrow yes tomorrow it's crazy it's real <laughs> it's, right it's crazy <laughs> oh my gosh Have we said it enough it's gonna be a true uh, true alpha, alpha. So well, like, i will say yeah. it to you every every time you watch the game <laughs> this is the first <laughs> I mean, the game. version of a game that we intend to build upon yeah. for years yes right so it's not gonna have oh everything smite one has plus a ton more right it's not gonna be that yeah. it's got a lot of different stuff it's got a lot of new stuff it's got a lot of the stuff that we think is most important to the core gameplay. You know, running around on a map, PvPing, mm -hmm. and playing a MOBA and winning the game, right? That, it's a very specific focus. But we still want to hear your, your feedback. We want to hear what's most important to you, what's what's missing the most. Uh, we The best thing you can do to help us is try to be specific. Yes. You know, don't just list off 100 things you want. Pick the thing you want the most, mm -hmm. right? 
um, if you run into an issue, try to don't say, you know, Gemma Viso sucks. Tell us, is it too good? Is it too bad? Is it confusing? Is there something missing visually? Yeah, it's like, a bug. Try to be specific yeah. as possible. I mean, we get a lot of feedback that's just like, you know, are we, we, we have a historically in this industry, get a lot of feedback that's very vague. So as much as you can, please be specific. Um, we're going to have a lot of specific systems to help support this, right, Isaiah? Yeah, we're going to have an official survey that's going to be linked in game and, of course, plastered all over social media. Feel free to join us on our official uh, Discord server, discordgg.com discord.gg slash smite game leave us all your feedback join in on the conversation we've got so many people in there that love smite we're gonna have a bug report form i believe yes we'll have well. a so there'll be a general survey mm -hmm. gameplay satisfaction mm -hmm. form and a bug report and a bug report, report form please fill those out we want to hear it we want to see that if you think we don't use it, we do. Oh, <laughs> you yeah. have to look at yeah, that. The bug closely. report form, once you fill it out, it goes to a channel internally that goes directly to the QA team. Mm -hmm. It is the quickest way to report bugs to the team. So definitely be sure you're using that. And yeah, we'll be following socials, you know. We'll be in the Discord. Watching edits, streams. Uh, you. Just all that stuff. Everything. We'll be, yep. we'll be paying attention. Speaking of watching streams, the question I keep on getting is, can I can I stream this game? Can I make content? Of course, we want do. to watch yes. all of your gameplay. It's super important to us. I, we're big fans of watching Smite content, and yep. I've been personally just fiending for Smite 2 content. Yeah. Mm, I know yeah. our creators have been yeah. fiending to make it. I've been fiending to watch it. We want to see all of it. So definitely, once uh, once you hop in tomorrow, boot up the streams, get those 24 hours going, those subathons, <laughs> those YouTube videos, all that stuff. I've already I've seen, seen a lot of talks. crazy uh, content creation planning yes. um, yeah, by different yeah. streamers to do this. Uh, it's exciting. So exciting. Cool. And uh, as we kind of set expectations for what's happening tomorrow, we're going to have a full blog post that goes out tomorrow with more information on what you can expect in the alpha, going over things like what kind of content is available, what queues, what server regions, all that stuff. So be on the lookout for for that that go, will go out. On and we're going to have the Dev Insight Show. Yep. Oh, yeah, that's the true. The blog is going to go out the same time the Dev Insight starts. So okay. 12 o'clock tomorrow. Be so sure to tomorrow, all of us will be back to be in a more standard question and answer. We're going to yep. be taking questions. Isaiah is going to be scanning for those all night that's right it's gonna be a, yeah. long, night. It's gonna be a long weekend <laughs> for all of us oh, yeah. but we're gonna we want uh, any questions anything confusing about whiskey. today we will talk about tomorrow and we'll also we'll have chat pulled up tomorrow yep. we'll go into a little bit more of the details on the specifics if you know if if, if the sickos out there want to see our spreadsheets we're happy to share them yep. um, <laughs> we'll do some fun stuff tomorrow to talk through all that i know right um what else is on the list uh, if you want to play tomorrow be sure you've got your founders edition locked yes. in oh yeah loaded gotta do that you know right. make sure you, you've got access to play the game uh but I think that's that's just about it. Any any other closing notes from the design team? We do have a special treat that I'll talk about after <laughs> I let you all you know yeah. give, oh. any, <laughs> give any notes. Thank you to you all on the yeah. team. Thank you to the shout outs to the whole Smite Two and Smite One Dev team and our support staff. Absolutely. Like yeah. everyone yes. at this whole company, yeah, has contributed to this game in some way. Yeah, and I know we talked a lot about specific gameplay today, but there was so much art, mm -hmm. yep. UI. Backend programming. I mean, we should probably talk more about the entire new back, like online platform oh, that Smite yeah. Two is on. That's yeah. a completely new one from Smite One. Mm -hmm. There's so much cool stuff to talk about this game with this game that we'll get into over time with you. Yeah. So I just wanted to shout out everyone on the team. Thank you so much, and thank you to our testers who have helped us already. Yes. Yep. Thank you to everyone who plans to just be mashing Q button <laughs> this weekend. <laughs> thank you to you too. Oh man. Every oh. dev, every player, every fan for the last Absolutely. ten plus years working on Smite One, getting us to Smite Two. Like we're here. Yeah. My, yeah. my, my final two. thing is like we've had ten years of Smite, right? And like being at this first step for smite 2 is just so exciting Crazy. to everybody on the team yeah i know players are excited so i yeah. just can't wait for tomorrow it reminds me of the the original smite 1 alpha days because i was in that and like mm -hmm. just the amount of feedback and the loop like it's going to be really really fun to just kind of relive that whole experience and and build out the next 10 plus years of, oh, yeah. of a great game awesome well we went over a lot of gameplay stuff today i said i had a special treat we kind of went over everything at a high level but we figured, why not show some gameplay? So we've got a video prepped. Some of the crew actually played a game oh, of no. Smite 2. Oh, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. Cut it. There you go. Oh, yeah. cut it. Full, a full match of Smite show 2. Match between the devs. Right? I, I get forgot busted about this. here. It has nothing to do with how poorly I play in this. Oh, I played so bad. It's going to be my good. lane match. I will say the video the was recorded about a month ago. So what you there, see in that yeah, video true. is not going to be reflective of an Alpha 1. I even think uh, Hecate might be in that video. Like we said earlier, early, we're, kit. We're early kit, 
That's not going to be the same K1, thing as yeah. we see uh, when Hecate finally comes to place. But we were at a place that we, we wanted to share it with you just to kind of get people excited and give everybody their first taste <laughs> at a competitive, in quotation marks, uh, game of Smite 2. You should so, cast the whole thing. I don't want to. I don't want to. Nah, you're going to see, oh, there's a chain lightning missed by aggro. Yep. <laughs> Five in a row. Crazy. Cool. Well, chat, stay tuned for that. But until then, we'll see you back here, same place, 12 p.m. tomorrow for the Dev Insight. But until then, enjoy the match.